Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. Saints, has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. There was a difference between just being a nominal Christian, Sunday to Sunday Christian, Bible study Christian, and one who has a passion, a desire, and a resolve to seek the Lord and to pursue Him with everything. I saw what looked like Christianity, but I was not satisfied. And I knew that there had to be more. And I began to explore. I read the books of great men like Watchman Nee. I read materials of people like Peter Tan. I read the books of Kenneth Hagin. I studied God's generals, revivals. In a bit to find out that spiritual ingredient that is responsible for a life of fire. For a life that is not cold at all. Hallelujah. And I discovered a few things and I'll be sharing some of them with us tonight. Hallelujah. In my opinion, I think that the, the greatest disaster that can happen to a man is not um, it's not sickness. In fact, it's not even demonic oppression. As bad as these things are. I think that, in my opinion, the greatest disaster that can happen to a man is that you walk in error or you do not press through spiritual things to attain the full stature of that which can be available for you in the spirit. I once heard the story, I think it's a popular story in the Christian faith, about a man who boarded a ship, and part of that ship there was a package for his meal. Have you heard that story? And the man was more than grateful to get into the ship. And for days, he was scrounging the little um, food that he held. And his table was vacant. And when he was almost dying, he was told that there had been provision for more. This is how it is with many believers. We do not know that there can be more, that our Christian experience can become richer, that we can become a lot spiritual than we are. And, and that which I seek to teach tonight will help us to understand this. So that we do not just get born again and stand at the gate of the kingdom and not press deeper. Hallelujah. Now according to scriptures, please write. The Bible reveals to us, spiritually speaking, that there are three categories of people. Three types of man. As far as it has to do with our walk with God. The Bible reveals to us clearly 
that at any given point in time, you will find three kinds of people. Number one is what the Bible calls the natural man. The natural man. Number two, the Bible calls this second kind of man the carnal man. The carnal man. Number three, he calls the third kind of man the spiritual man. And this is very interesting. Please follow me. So the Bible tells us that when God is speaking through the word, he's speaking to three kinds of people. There are words that are directed to natural people. There are words that are directed to carnal people. There are words that are directed to spiritual people. And I believe that one of the challenges in the body of Christ is that we have not been accurately taught what I call the path of spiritual progress. The transitions from the natural man, the exact spiritual requirement that it takes for you to leave the realm of a natural man to the next phase. And that when you are in that second phase, many of us have not been taught exactly the spiritual pathway that transforms men from being carnal to being spiritual indeed. Hallelujah. And I truly am convinced that part of the reason why many believers are not strong in the spirit and cannot do much for the kingdom is because they have not been taught the spiritual pathway that transits men from being carnal to being spiritual indeed. Now, it's very sad that we don't agree over many things in the body of Christ. And we just thank God for his grace and his faithfulness. I think that one of the things that we all agree over in the body of Christ is the condition of being born again. If you confess Jesus Christ, you confess, you believe that God raised him from the dead, you are saved. Every sect, every denomination believes that and there is no argument about that. The moment that you satisfy that condition you are accepted across every denomination. But after that we almost don't agree on anything again. And so there has been confusion through the years as to the exact path of spiritual progress. Hallelujah. And tonight the teaching is an attempt to bring us into that understanding, I truly believe that this holds the key to our deeper and our richer work with God. I read a book by a man who was acclaimed to be the 21st century prophet, a man called A.W. Tozer, The Pursuit of God. Powerful book. These were men whose dimensions of spiritual understanding was amazing. I have read many books I have been built by so many people in the body of Christ. But there are certain people that their teachings and their spiritual paradigm has left a mark upon my life that will never be erased. Their understanding about God is so accurate. When you study their writings, you know that these people encountered God. Hallelujah. There are so many books in the body of Christ Attempting to answer different questions about the pursuit of God. And the challenge is that, you see, when hunger meets error, it becomes a very unfortunate thing in the spirit. There are many believers who are hungry. We come to God, we come to church, and we say, I am thirsty. Lord, reveal more. You see, when you are hungry, you are like a baby whose mouth is open. Anything that can fill you, you will take it and swallow it sincerely. Hallelujah. And many of us, 
That's the journey that begun the error that we have come into. We, have, we delved into it sincerely. When we got born again, there were probably no good Christian groups and fellowships around us to build us accurately. And so everything that looked like light, we ran to it and we poured our lives to receive it. And that little that we had is what we are holding on to today. But the unfortunate part is that some of what we received is not the accurate truth. So I sincerely pray from the depths of my heart that God will open our eyes so that our spiritual progress will be accurate and that at the end of our journey we will not have regrets as to why we did not attain the full stature of being spiritual men. And the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. And so we have learned a lot of things. And um, I have seen that there is a cancer that is eating believers up. And that cancer in one word is called the flesh. It's a cancer that has been responsible for the downfall of many mighty men. Please open your heart tonight because the Lord is going to talk to you very seriously. Hallelujah. Everyone say the flesh. We're going to examine what is this spiritual cancer that is able to impede people and stop them from becoming spiritual. Grant us grace in the name of Jesus. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Come and make my heart your home. Come and be everything I am and all I know. Search me true and true till my heart becomes a home for you if you know the song just sing it one more time come and make my heart your home come and be everything i am and all i Search me through and through till my heart becomes a home for you. First Corinthians 2 from verse 14. Verse 14. In fact, let's start from verse 13. First Corinthians 2, let's start from verse 13. Which things also we speak, not in the words of man's wisdom, that man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. 14. Everyone read. One to read. Stop. So the Bible tells us there is a man called what? The natural man. But the natural man cannot... Receive what? The things of the Spirit. Why? For they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them. Because spiritual things are spiritually discerned. Are you following me now? So, this is the first kind of man the Bible seeks to explain to us. He is called the natural man. And the Bible gives us certain traits it doesn't leave us in confusion to guess who that man is. It says the natural man is one who has not yet sustained the capacity to understand spiritual things. They are foolishness unto him. He cannot know them because he has not been quickened 
to discern spiritual things. In one word, the natural man is one who has not met Jesus Christ. The natural man is what we call the unbeliever. I don't want to use that word because there are Christians that are still unbelievers. Hallelujah. So the natural man is one who has not met the Lord Jesus Christ. He has not come to the cross. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light. And the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. And now I am happy all the way. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light. And the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. And now I am happy all the day. So the natural man is one who has not truly had the encounter of regeneration. The word regeneration comes from the word regene. To record you again. Regene. It's a new encoding. A changing of your spiritual configuration. Hallelujah. That's the first kind of man. And the Bible says for those kinds of people. There is nothing spiritual that ever makes sense to them. Hallelujah. They consider the faith work foolishness. They consider every spiritual activity foolishness. Some of us were like that before Christ found us. Alienated from the commonwealth of Israel. The commonwealth of Zion. Hallelujah. Everything that was of God was, an, was a thing of mockery. We laughed at spiritual things. This man has an eternal destiny. The name of the place is Hellfire. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Even if this man has been in church all his life, even if his father is a pastor, even if they baptized him in water, for as long as he has not met Jesus Christ, he is going to hell. If he dies. Is there any confusion about that? So that we can move forward. Any confusion? The natural man has an eternal destiny. He is going first to hell. And will later be relocated to the lake of fire. Hallelujah. That means if you are here. And you have not met Jesus Christ. I wish it were a lie. But it's true. You are going to hell. If you don't repent there is no other way to say it I'm, I'm very sorry i would have said you will go to a place that is not nice it would have been a nice way but let me tell you the truth and take me seriously the bible says this i am the way i am the truth can we get back to the basics of christianity i am the life not your pastor, not your prophet, not anointing oil. Are you getting what I'm saying? Placing an anointing oil on you does not make you a Christian. Soaking you in water, in baptism, does not make you a Christian. I, I, is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Because we need to redefine the condition for true salvation. A prophet of God Speaking a word over you to say your sins are forgiven does not take you to heaven. Hello? I want all of us to get to heaven. So I want us to probe so that if you belong to this category 
and your conviction about your being saved is because of some of these things I'm saying. Let's clean up the air so that you will know. There is what we call, they used to teach us in Sunday school, called assurance of salvation. Did they teach you? Not salvation. Assurance of salvation. That you can know that if the trumpet sounds today, by the way, there is a real trumpet and it will sound. Let's be careful as we progress spiritually and we seek to edit some of these things out. I hear men of God who speak and say, there's nothing like the book of life. You know that statement? Write my name in the book of life. Yeah, forget it. There's nothing like that. <laughs> we will know one day, but I can tell you there is a book of life. The Bible says, books were opened and another book, a master book was opened and the name of that book, it didn't leave us to any theological guessing. He said the name of that book is the book of life. And whosoever's name, pastor, apostle, koinonia member, prayer band member, revivalist, whosoever's name was not found in that book. The Bible tells you that you are cast into the lake of fire. It's as simple as that. What's that man's song? It's your name. In the book of life. Serious question. Is your name. Sing it. Is my name. See let me tell you. You know. There are many believers who think. That your confidence. Is equal to salvation. I won't go to hell. I'm going to heaven. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. If you are not saved, brothers and sisters, hear me. There is a name for you. The Bible calls you what? The natural man. This is not my message. I'm just digressing to press it in so that you will know and you will care. Brothers and sisters, I know that we have been taught not to scare people with the revelation of judgment that there is judgment. They don't scare people. So that their coming to Christ will not be out of fear. But the only issue is that it is true. Brothers and sisters, listen to me. Heaven and earth will pass away. But not one word. Not one word will fail. I really want us to truly, truly, before we even progress, examine our salvation. The Bible says to examine ourselves so that you are sure that if Jesus comes today, he will make heaven. If you know right now that if the trumpet sounds, you are going to heaven, stand up. If you are not sure, no problem. I'm serious. We are not playing games in this place. Please, you know that we are very serious. If you are sure that if the trumpet sounds right now, right now as we speak, you are going, you know, we can fake it. Hallelujah. That if the trumpet sounds now, right now, together, we are going to be with Jesus Christ in the air. That is one of the greatest assurance. You are sure you are going to graduate. But that is inferior to your eternal destiny. You are sure you are going to get married. You are sure you are going to be healed. You are sure you are going to be delivered. But brothers and you are even sure you will be successful. But can I be sincere with you? If you are not sure of your salvation, it's time to deal with it. And I'm going to talk to you. I will tell you what the condition to make heaven is. Please and please, I owe you that responsibility under God. Thank you for giving to the Lord. Keep standing. I am a life that was changed. Thank you 
forgiven to the Lord. I am so in the course of ministering. I have had the privilege to stand before people a few minutes before they died. I have had the privilege to comfort families that have been bereaved. Some families of members here. Some families around that I'm connected to. Hallelujah. I've had the opportunity to hold the phone and hear families cry as their loved ones pass on. I've had the opportunity to look at people for the last time. I've had advanced knowledge where God told me this person is not going to make it. He's going to die. The Bible says if our hope is only in this life, we are of all men most miserable. If you've never thought about this thing this year, I want you to think about it for one minute. Jesus Christ is truly coming back. Please, in case you have been told that it will not happen, let me guarantee you there is an event that is going to happen in this earth. And every prophecy, every single prophecy that needs to, be, to come to pass for the coming of Jesus Christ has been fulfilled. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Please take it seriously every prophecy. There are people who have had visions of the coming of Christ. There are people who have had visions. I'm just reminding you that there is more to this life, this physical life that you see. And as you walk up and down your daily activity, if you are not sure that if Jesus Christ comes, we will be caught up. Let me tell you how it will happen. Please sit down. Everybody open your Bible. First Thessalonians, please. Paul had a revelation of what is going to happen and I'm going to show you. First Thessalonians 4. We are talking about the natural man. As far as I'm concerned, this is the most important thing. The natural man should know. First Thessalonians 4. From verse 13. 4 verse 13. Please let's hurry up. So that we can beat time. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for salvation. Everyone look up. It's projected. Paul is talking to the church in Thessalonica. He said, but I would not have you to be ignorant. That means part of the revelations of the kingdom Paul wants us to have is the knowledge about how the coming of Christ is going to be. Brethren, so he's speaking to believers, concerning them which are asleep, that's those who have died, that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope. Verse 14. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so also, which sleep in Jesus, God will bring with him. Verse 15. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. So Paul is not speaking his opinion. He's speaking by the word of the Lord. That which we are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord. That means the day that Jesus Christ is going to come, there will still be people who will be alive in the earth. Are you getting me? Not everyone is going to have died as in gone to the grave. So he's giving us, Paul is painting a picture on how the rapture will be. Verse, verse 16. For the Lord himself, for who? The owner of the earth, the Lord himself, shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel. Now, which of the archangels we are not told exactly. But the Bible tells us, 
Paul was speaking that on that day Jesus himself will descend from the heaven of heavens and will come upon this very physical earth. And he says there will be a shout the voice of an archangel and with the trump of God. That means a trumpet is going to sound. A shofar will blow. And the first thing that will happen in that great ceremony is that the dead in everybody say dead in one more time so it's not only those who are alive in Christ a man can also be dead in Christ that he served God with his whole life and he believed and accepted the lordship of Jesus Christ I bring you a message of hope for those of you who have lost loved ones, brothers and sisters, if they gave their heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, there is a name for them. The Bible says they are dead but in Christ. That means a day will come, there will be a glorious reunion. Hallelujah. So the dead in Christ will be the first to rise. 17. Then we which are alive and remain shall do what? We shall be caught up with them in the clouds. Let me explain to you what will happen. All of this that you see will happen in split seconds. Hallelujah. Split seconds of earth's time. It will be faster than the speed of light. There will be that sound. There's no time I would have shown you that unbelievers are not going to hear that sound. Because he, Jesus gave us a revelation. He said, my sheep hear my voice. That means if you didn't hear it, it was not for you. It's as simple as that. Is that in your Bible? <laughs> the Bible says two people will be lying down. Two roommates in Ribadu will be lying down. And one will be taken and leave the stubborn roommate who is not paying attention to the things of God and thinks I don't care. You get up and say, ah, ah, where did my roommate go to? We have checked out of this earth. A day is coming. The greatest catastrophe that has happened to the earth it's not all of the tsunami and the disappearance. Imagine how many pilots are going to go. You think they will stay? Once you hear that sound, you are leaving. The sound does something to your spirit, man. At once, all the graves, that was the revelation that was adumbrated in Ezekiel 37. People who have been maimed, Jews that were killed by Adolf Hitler, Bones that have been scattered. Matthias that were beheaded at once. That sound. That sound will do a quickening. The same way Christ was raised from the dead. The Holy Ghost will demonstrate his sovereignty at its best. To resurrect every man who is dead in Christ. Within a split second. And they will rise up with glorified bodies. Watch this. And that time, some of us who are alive, I pray that it happens during koinonia. While we are seated, maybe we are worshipping. All of a sudden, I will leave my Bible for you. My phone. Hallelujah. We will leave the drums, keyboard, there will still be a few people seated and they wonder what is happening. Those who laugh at us right now and laugh at our fanatism for the kingdom and think that life is all about money and cars and houses huh? and marriage and will not give priority to spiritual things. I am not telling you a fairy tale. 
We are closer to the coming of Christ right now than before Koinonia started. And it's a very good news. If it's a bad news for you, you are the natural man. It is not supposed to be a bad news. When people die, we write transition. Say transition. So we who are alive, all of a sudden, this body that is limited, suddenly, immortality is perfected upon this body. We will no longer carry this material. The clothes that we will wear will no longer be removed. There will be robes. They are called garments of praise. They are garments in the spirit. And we will join the king of kings. His feet is not going to touch the earth. He will stand in, He will come with his own cloud. His own realm. Mm. And all of a sudden you will see your grandfather. You will see all the missionaries that were wounded in Nigeria. The ones who were killed in Calabar. The ones that were killed in different crises. We see all kinds of things. And together we will arise. And for the first time you will look at the earth. From heaven's perspective. And truly see that it is shadow. Every time we are on the air. I have the privilege to look down. And you see houses. Like you know how children make toys. Whereas somebody will say, I must build this thing. If not, I won't trust you. From heaven's perspective, people steal so that they can build that little object. And you see people moving like ants. That is from, from a view in the sky. Imagine how God looks at everyone. And he say, if I don't build this house, oh Lord, you wait. And he's saying, are you not wise? Have you not heard that there are mansions in heaven? It was not a prophetic statement. There are real mansions. There are people who have gone there. There are mansions. There are mansions. We will be caught up. We will leave all the countries. They will elect themselves. They will fight themselves. There will be a lot of vacancy. ABU Senate, no more admission. Some of your lecturers will come for lecture that morning only to find out that CNN will carry the most shocking news ever seen in human history. This day will put it new Nigeria, punch this nation massive disappearance of people all of a sudden it will occur to those you preach to who laughed at you that this, this person said this by the time they are saying it we will wave this earth goodbye I look forward to that time it's a very good experience do you know what it means that you are relieved from this body of sorrow no thinking about all of these kinds of things. It's making some of you afraid because preachers have run away from it because they are not sure they are going to heaven. Don't talk about it. We're already going. We must talk about it. You talk about your house. You are hoping for break or strike or something so that you will run home. This world is not my own. Remember that country music. Powerful songs. Right now we dodge them. We sing all kinds of songs. I must make it. God is holding my hand and I must make it. These are the kinds of songs we write. Nothing at all that reminds us that we are leaving this realm. This is already a message. For someone, this is, your, this is your word from the Lord tonight. That you should sit down and think about your life. I can stand as a preacher and deceive men. But on that day, all of a sudden you will see bishops and pastors still in the earth. And the members will say, Pastor, you say, please don't. The Bible will once again become 
the best seller. Because every body, whether you believe in Christ or not, it will no longer be an instrument of devotion. It will be the roadmap for the next level of prophecy. Every church on earth will be jam-packed. At that point, every business will close their shop by force. When there is nobody you want, whether you are selling tire, whether you are an iron bender, whatever you are doing, you will pack up your business and run to church. And everybody will sit in church hoping that that is the place where the rapture will happen, whereas it has happened. All of a sudden, within 24 hours, a strange man will appear on your TV. And you say, world, calm down. It's true that some people have gone, but let there be peace. And the Bible calls him the Antichrist. Not an Antichrist. He is the Antichrist. At that point, the Bible says, men will run and beg the mountain to fall on them. You are afraid of bicycle hitting your leg. But the Bible says even death will run away. Death will say, I've tried. That's it. Mission accomplished. Yes, read your Bible. Men will run to the mountain. People will carry knives to kill themselves and will not die. The Bible says the, in Revelation, I thought we'll be able to do it this year, but we may do it. We may not be able to do it this year. Eschatology, there is a whole teaching on it. A four-part series on the end time. Hallelujah. I'm just giving you, am I boring you? <laughs> you better say no because this cannot be boring when your eternal destiny is tied to it. <laughs> Some of us, this is a revelation. God has been talking to you. Calm down with the issue of wanting to make it and think about your eternal destiny. Hallelujah. Churches will still be full. There will still be men of God doing live telecasts, whereas the rapture has happened. Some will even be making altar calls. I mean what I'm saying, and I'm very serious about it. Yet there are some people, some quiet mothers, who have been praying, like Anna, the prophetess, looking forward to the consolation. When that happens... Some of the cleaners in our churches who we have disrespected. Before you know it, they will leave the rag for you there and leave. Some of the house helps we have ill-treated, they will go and leave all of us. The door of CBN will be wide open to go and pack all the money. All the security people, the banks will be there. The bulk room will be open. Go and pack. And then you will hear that there is a new technology for buying and selling the Antichrist will introduce a new code of conduct. Joshua Selman! For where? He has gone. And I will turn there and I will see Lawrence. I will say you made it. Oh, I pray that you will turn and see your father, your mother. And you say, where is my sister? And there will be joy. No matter how antisocial you are, there must be joy. Because you will turn and see someone and you will suddenly turn and see the person who led you to Christ but has died. And you will look at him. And we will all be young. No competition of I'm fine, you are not. We will all be fine. Leave this body with all the deficiencies that this realm brought for us. And we will arise in a glorified body. Question. Will your father be there? Will your mother be there? Yes, you may be there. There are people in my life, I'm sorry to say it, I know they will not be there. Based on the truth of God's word, they died without Jesus Christ. Some of them, we had the privilege to talk to them. And they didn't take it seriously. And they died. There are people you spoke to. They didn't know that you were so close. And they didn't listen. And they died. With my mouth will I make it known. That's why we have to preach. From the rising of the sun right until it's going down. I will sing 
of the mercies of the Lord. There will be churches that more than half of the congregation will be dancing and singing praise and worship. And they are not gone. Because they never took seriously the issue of salvation. They thought it's a basic thing. There will even be men of God sharing revelations. And all of a sudden they will find out that the earth looks empty. The weight of the earth will reduce because people have left. Revelation says that there was 30 minute silence in heaven. You know why? The, the shock in heaven because of the seven vials that was about to be poured upon the earth. The Bible says one third of the vegetation of the earth will be destroyed. You were taught about ecosystems, right, in biology. Imagine what happens to the earth when one third of the vegetation is destroyed. It's not a prophetic statement. It will happen. No buying indomie until the mark of the beast is there. No nothing. No matter how you hide. We have GPS. What do they call it? GPRS. GPS, they will find you. No hiding. The question I want to ask you right now, again, is, are you going to make it? This is not to scare you. What then is the condition to make heaven? What condition transits you from being a sinner To being a righteous person in Christ. Romans chapter 8. Sorry, chapter 10. I'll begin to read from verse 8. Romans chapter 10, verse 8. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Here's the condition. That if thou shalt what? Confess. Not assume, confess, verbalize with your mouth the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And if you believe it, that means it is possible to confess what you do not believe. Is that true? So, you must first believe in your heart that this is true. Jesus came and died. He shed his blood for my sins. He was given as a propitiation, as an exchange. What I could not do for myself. Jesus came as the ransom. The lamb that shed his blood for my sins. He said if you believe in the Lord Jesus. And thou shalt believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead. What is the, the result? Thou shalt be saved. Next verse. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness. And then with your mouth confession is made unto salvation. Has this happened to you? I know you have spoken. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. I believe in you. I believe in you. I believe you died. I believe you died. And you are pinching people all around. The Bible says, do you believe in your heart? Was it a sincere statement? Do you truly believe that Jesus died? Do you believe that he shed his blood? He took your place in death. That you may take his place in life. Do you believe that he defeated sin? He defeated Satan? He broke the power of sin. Do you believe that he offers you new life? And if you believe it, have you acknowledged it? If you have not done that, if Jesus comes today, you are going to hellfire. 
Hallelujah. So before we continue, I'm going to give us five minutes. And I'd like us to pray from the depths of your heart, every one of us, and say, Lord, I commit myself. Commit myself. I want to be sure that on this day, this decision is true in my life. Jesus, Son of God. Pray. I believe in you. I believe in you. I call you my Messiah. Jesus, Son of God. I believe in you. Pray from the depths of your heart. I believe that Jesus died. Jesus, Son of God. I believe in you. Oh, I believe. I believe in life and in death. This becomes my conviction. Jesus, Son of God. I may not believe many things about the Christian faith, but I believe this one. Jesus, Son of God, I believe in you. I believe in you. With my heart, I believe that Jesus died. Jesus, Jesus paid the price. I believe the truth of God's word. I believe that Jesus came. He was born of the Virgin Mary. I believe, I believe that he suffered. I believe that he went to the cross. I believe he hung on that cross for me. I believe that he was pierced with those nails for my sins. I believe he said it is finished. I believe he was buried and he went to hell and collected the keys of death hell and the grave i believe that on the third day he resurrected i believe that he's alive today and he offers me the gift of righteousness oh and i've received it by faith jesus son of god Most important decision in your life when the road is called up yonder 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 When the road is called up yonder, when the road, when the road is called up yonder, when the road is called up yonder, I'll be there. In two minutes. I like you to cry for your family members that you know you know they are going to hell lift your voice and pray don't pretend it some of us our kind fathers are still going to hell when all is said and done when all is said and done your degree means nothing your prosperity means nothing when all is said and done when all is said and done there are some of our sisters going to hell brothers our relatives kind cousins well-meaning family members but as it is right now the truth of god's word is that they are going to hell pray for them 
Lord, save them. Save them. Save them. Hell is real. Heaven is real. Whether you believe it or not, Jesus is coming. Please pray for them in one minute. I know we've taken time, but this is too important. What then are we doing? Save their soul, oh God. Save their soul. Please pray for your father. Lord, let him not go to hell. Now that he's alive, there is still a chance. Pray for your drunkard brother. Lord, you have to do something about his salvation. Pray for your idol worshipping grandparents. Lord, they are kind. They love me. But they are going to hell. Save them, oh God. Are you praying? Let me tell you, if this is all we do tonight, it is important. There is nothing that stops Jesus Christ from coming this night. The gospel of the kingdom is already being preached. There is nothing that stops Jesus Christ from coming tomorrow morning. Hallelujah. The last prayer point before we continue. Listen, look at me. I want to say something and I mean it from the depths of my heart. There are some of you here, the blood of your family members and your friends will be upon your head because you move around, you know Jesus and you love him, but you are afraid and ashamed. You don't want stigmatization. How can me, a fine girl, be involved in preaching? How can me a bubble? All right, they are going to die. That's the problem. It has nothing with you being a preacher. And let me tell you, the Bible tells us that the rich man was in hell and he saw Lazarus. They communicated. You will be able to see your father and your mother. They will look at you. You will look at your roommates. You will look at people. You will see them. Let me tell you the truth. And they are going to ask you. They will say, Femi, you saw this thing. You didn't insist. You even asked me out. Yet you never preached to me. You taught me about prosperity. You taught me. Many of us who are preachers here. The blood of many people will be upon our heads. We taught about dimensions of revival. We taught about divine health. Rema, we heal the sick. There were all kinds of demonstrations of the spirit. But they, we did not confirm whether our members are going to make it. We had building projects. Project 10,000. Excellence. There was table. You cut cake. We dress well in suit. But the question is, in the final analysis, are you preaching to anybody? There are some of you, you have never opened your mouth to talk to anybody. You can share about revelation. You can share about marriage. You can give koinonia messages. You are on Facebook. You are on Twitter. You have all kinds of things. God gave you an opportunity. You have recharge card. Let me tell you something. In 2000, and was it 3 or 4? I used to do something. I will never sleep until I send text messages to at least 10 or 15 people talking to them about the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know them. I would just be calling numbers at random. I think that was when 2003, 4. That was when they started this GSM thing. I would just type in numbers at random and send. Just type a message about salvation. Not a condemning message, but a sincere message. 
There are some of you, you can make tracks. You are waiting until the day you become a Jew. Some of us, our Facebook pages have become platforms for, for gossiping and making all kinds of noise. Yet our loved ones are going to hell. You are interested in a relationship with a lady. You don't even know whether she's going to heaven or hell. All you know is she's fine. Continue. Hallelujah. And you are there. God gave you beauty. All kinds of guys are coming. You don't want to fall your hand. And you never talk to them about Jesus Christ. Some of you get up and you allow people. You come for going on. And you just say, I'm going. And they say, okay. And it never occurs to you that if you come for koinonia and the trumpet sounds, you will never see them again. You have no ministry if souls are not being saved. You are not doing ministry. I don't care what you are doing. Our number one assignment is part of our mission statement massive salvation of souls not salvation of souls massive salvation of souls when i see a man that needs to hear about jesus and god grants me the grace i will speak if i cannot speak i will do something what is wrong with you going to the studio I'm going to pay 10 or 20,000 naira and just do a salvation message. You are not the name of any ministry. You say, what is the name of my own ministry? Must you have a ministry? Just go to the studio and do it a 20 minutes presentation of salvation. Or you and your friends contribute 2,000 to 2,000. 5 or 10 people and just put it as an mp3. We put all kinds of useless things um, this is Joshua Selman. I'm about to release my debut track, Nonsense, when there is room to preach the gospel first. How many of our gospel songs carry direct salvation messages? Have you, see, have you discovered the way we are quietly deviating and nobody wants to attack the salvation thing? It looks old school, right? It doesn't look very attractive. So I rather push success. I'm not against success, brothers and sisters. But I repeat, if Jesus comes, nobody is carrying a khaki out of this realm. Are you, are, are, you, are you aware of that? You are not going to carry any shirt. All of these things, you will drop it behind. Whatever you have in your account is useless. You won't carry your awards. You won't carry your degree. You won't carry your marriage certificate. Woe is me if I preach not the gospel. This is what drives me every day. I have dedicated my life, not just for ministry, to turn the hearts of many to righteousness. I don't care how much I'm misunderstood. I don't care how old school I sound. When Jesus comes in the final analysis, some of you are fellowship escorts. Some of you are pastors. When was the last time you truly preached? Do you know that we graduate people from Bible school and they don't know what the gospel is? They know the keys to wealth. They understand marriage counseling, conflict resolution, how to raise money for church. But they know nothing about winning souls. One more time before I continue. I've, this thing has touched my heart. This thing has touched my heart. Because this is the core. The pivot. The pivot. Of our Christian experience. If God makes you a millionaire. And nobody is getting saved as a result of your millions. You will eat your money the day the church is raptured. If God gives you a platform. You have your small fellowship, your group, and you just feel we are only five. I think everybody is born again. Don't make assumptions. That's why I respect Papa E.E. Adeboye. If he holds a meeting between him and his wife, I'm sure he will still make an altar call. No assumption. 
No assumption. We preach powerful messages. And at the end of it, we don't care whether people are saved or not. One more time. Put a fire in my spirit. Let my mouth not be silent as far as preaching the gospel. Telling people that Jesus died for them and that there is judgment if they don't pay attention. Lift your voice and pray in one minute. Some of you truly, when you started out with God, you were very serious as far as soul winning is concerned. You didn't even know that there was anything called anointing. But now you know that there is anointing. I will use everything that God has given me for the gospel. Pray. Prosperity. Grace. The knowledge of graphics. My knowledge of media. My beauty. Sister, pray. Tired of taking men to hell. Now I need to begin to take men to heaven. I will use my voice to sing. And I will keep singing until people come to Jesus Christ. Many of you need to repent on behalf of your groups and ministries. Open your mouth and ask the Lord for forgiveness. You've been doing a lot of activities. But they are not channeled towards soul winning. And you don't care. Open your mouth and pray. And say, Lord, my small fellowship in the village. have not been preaching the gospel. I've been preaching many things. Not the gospel of salvation. Every other gospel is only useless or useful when the gospel of salvation has been preached. Some of us have little groups that we preach to occasionally. Where did you throw your evangelism zeal? It looked old school and you've thrown it for something new. The Bible says, ask for the ancient part. Please pray. Don't let my love grow cold. I'm crying out. Light the fire again. I need your discipline. I'm crying out like the fire again. Don't let my love grow cold. I'm crying out like the fire again. I need your discipline. I'm crying out like the fire again. I just feel God wants us to stop here and press on this issue tonight. Carnal believers and the rest, we have to we'll take on that one. Hallelujah. Whether you are going to kneel down or lie down in the next 10 minutes, I'd like you to write the names of five people that we are going to intercede for their salvation. If this is what we do tonight, go ahead and pray. Please cry to God. They must be saved. The natural man. I'm crying now. Write it. There is no man that Jesus cannot save. For as long as there is life, there is hope. Shake it up, la 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 Where is all about 
about you it's all about you jesus i'm sorry lord for the thing i've made it when it's all about you please write it down all about you jesus it's all about you it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. It's all about you, Jesus, Jesus. In the next five minutes, I like you to pray in tongues like your life depends on it and say lord these five people must be saved i must see them in heaven lift your voice and begin to pray whether you want to kneel down cry whatever it is let there be a cry they must be born again Rabakata preske bete gede balararabash. Rakapo shoto pekete le prekete le koto supa. My father will not go to hell. My father will not go to hell. My mother will not go to hell. Pray. Save my husband. Save my wife. Pray. When the trumpet sounds, I must see them in heaven. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. They must be saved. They may be non Christians, but I travel. They must be saved. Revelations 20. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. The Lord is imparting a genuine passion for souls. Yeah. yeah. Revelations 20. From verse 10. Revelations 20, verse 10. Listen, listen. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophets are, and shall be tormented day and night forever. Next verse. And I saw a great white throne. I saw it. I saw it. And he that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was no place found for them. Verse 12. I don't know what gospel you have been, heard, you have been preaching. I saw the dead, small and great, commissioners and houseboys. 
presidents and bike men, first class students, and those who did not pass jam. I saw them. I saw them. They stood before God. Every man must stand before God. And the books were open. What books? Your faithfulness in evangelism. Your giving. For those who have taught you that your works of righteousness are not important. Here goes the Bible. The works of men will be tried by fire. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. Brothers and sisters, read the remaining part by yourself. One to read. And the dead were judged out of that means there are things that are written. According to what? Next verse. And the sea gave up all the people who died by sea crash. And death and hell delivered all our uncles and aunties and politicians. It says, and they were judged, every man according to their works. 14. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. And the Bible says, this is the second death. Let me show you something. Is there another verse? Go ahead. Verse 15. Everyone read. And hold on. And what? Whosoever. At that point. Your status. Will not matter again. At that point. Your English. Your ordination. Will not matter. Your suit. Will not bail you out. He said whosoever was not found. Written in the book of life. There was no story. End of discussion. Cast into the lake of fire. Whether it is your father, whether it is your mother, some of you, if you don't pray, you will watch your mother who gave birth to you. You will watch her as the Bible says, depart from me. And you will watch them cry to hell. Some of you will watch your uncles lift your voice and cry and say, Lord, whatever it will take to stop them from going to this place of torment, I cry tonight. I love them too much I love my mother I love my father I love my brothers yeah. Whosoever's name was not found in the book of life be it a president be it a governor whether you are a first class student two one student it will not matter again it won't matter how many parishes you have it won't matter how many rema you have Hey, 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 hey. whether you are a member of koinonia or not is irrelevant i will stand for myself you will stand for yourself and i saw books open and another book was opened. Yeah. 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 Intercede for them. Lord, send angels. Send angels to my house. 
send angels. Give them dreams. Give them encounters with Jesus in their dreams. They must be born again. Yeah. 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 When all is said and done When all is said and done This is all that will matter Yeah 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 Revelations 21 Verse 3 a great voice out of heaven saying behold the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and be their God verse 4 and God finally brothers and sisters a day will come when all is said and done in this life God will wipe away the tears the tears of mockery some people died out of cancer some died out of hiv some were martyred they were standing for jesus while they were killed the bible says on that day that tears the tears of mockery holy holy the lord will wipe that tears the tears of the pain that you have to go through on account of the gospel that men will not like you some of you would have been married since if you were not standing for God. But because of your faith, the Bible says God will wipe that tears and there shall be no more death, no more obituary, no more pain, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away. Listen. Listen. It's not enough that you are convinced that you will make heaven. I'm still saying it. We are going to pray. There are some of our loved ones, some of us come from backgrounds that are non-Christians. And some of our loved ones are still there. You are going to pray. And everyone will pray too. Give them divine visitations. Encounters with Jesus Christ. Let me tell you, if Jesus came to die, an encounter is not too much to force any man to give his life to Christ. Lift your voice and pray. Encounters. Appear to them in visions like Saul on his way to Damascus. Lord, they will not die. Give them encounters. Give them encounters. Give them encounters. Rakata pakata badosh. Pray, change my father, change my mother. Some of them vowed 
that they will never give their hearts to the Lord. I like you to pray. It can change. Some of them are traditional worshippers. Mention them by name. Mention them by name. Read your prayer request. Mention them by name. Mention them by name. Claim their salvation in the name of Jesus. Some of them are religious people. The truth is they are not born again. They are not born again. Some of them belong to sects that will take them to hell. Occultic sects. Pray for them. Give them an encounter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll never forget one of our sisters. She was a member of the worship team. Hallelujah. I will never forget her touching testimony. Came from a completely non-Christian background. And she decided to give her life to Christ. When she gave her life to Christ, it was war. And gradually, gradually, the Lord started doing his thing in the family. The brother gave his life to Christ. And then I think the mother, and it was remaining the father, and this lady would not give up. I will never forget that night when she called me crying and jumping around chapel and said, can you imagine? My father, my father gave his life to Christ. She was jumping. See, there are some hardened people you see. You know that humanly speaking, they will never be born again. Don't try the power of the Holy Spirit. Think of how you were. Some of you think of what God brought you out of. Then you will know that there is no man that God cannot change. There is no man. God has changed occultists. God has changed hardened criminals. Some of you, you know where God brought you out from. If God could change you, if God could change you, we are still going to pray. You are going to say, Lord, put your word in my mouth. Because some of you, it's just, you don't know what to say. But we are going to cry. Lord, let no one's blood be upon my head on that day. Put your word in my mouth. And grant me the boldness to declare the gospel. Go ahead and pray. your word in my mouth pray deliver me from shame deliver me from my ego deliver me from embarrassment hey 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 are you praying from the depths of your heart? You must start with your family members before you think of crusades and outreaches. Start with your family members. They must be born again. They must be born again. Hallelujah. Listen. 
Listen. There are many avenues. Many avenues to turn the hearts of men to righteousness. Number one, the ministry of intercession. There are some of you who pray a lot. But all you are praying is, oh God, give me tea. God, give me bread. Add brew ban on the bread. That's, that's all our prayer. If, if, listen, if the scope of your Christian experience, there's, we'll do it another day. I really wanted to talk about the carnal man. And then we'll, there, there are scriptures that I prepare to touch. We can't, we can't do that. Our time is already gone. The slave to the flesh. That is the man of the flesh that can really not please God. That is another dimension. Maybe we'll consider that next week. Hallelujah. That you, you, you write the names of people and you just go into fasting for one day and it's not for yourself. How many of you have ever done that? To fast and it's not for yourself. If it's not for me, that's the flesh. That's the flesh. If it's not for my marriage, my, my lifting, my prosperity. Or that you go to prayer and say, Lord, you must save these souls. And you are not just pretending it. One thing that I know is that as much as God grants me grace and bread, no one's blood will be upon my head that day. No one will look at me and say, Joshua Selman, you had access to me, but you never spoke to me about Jesus. Do you know, listen, do you know what the, the, the scribes and the Pharisees said? They said, let his blood be on our head. Who taught them that principle? That the blood of a man can be upon the head of another. And that God would look and say, Ken, I gave you access. I gave you graces. And you ended up building an empire. MOG. They invited you to travel around the world. They gave you water, ushers around. And you never, you were not concerned about the souls of men. There are men who will carry the blood of others on their head. Hallelujah. Oh, I must preach. Necessity is laid upon me. Some of us, the only reason why we cannot, I'm not talking of condemning people, but I'm talking of being passionate enough to trust God. Tell them what Jesus did in your life. There are some of you, you have never invited anybody to church, not once, the way you are like this. You don't care. It's not an issue at all. Yet we sing and we say, Lord, I love you. Yet we sing and we say, someday I'm going home. The Lord is speaking to us tonight. The Bible says the harvest is wide, but the laborers are few. He said, pray ye the Lord of the harvest. That he will send laborers. When Jesus came, he gave his assignment a business like attitude. He said, I must walk the walk of him that sent me. Hallelujah. We just came back from a trip. And when I came, I couldn't even rest just to do everything and to come here. Now, why all of these things? Our flight was delayed. There were so many things. These guys have been tired. We left Benin Republic this morning by 5 a.m. in the morning. Headed to the airport. Our flight was shifted. And I can justify and say, Kite, God, you too, you know. But Paul said the love. He said, I, Paul, a bond servant. It looks like I'm in slavery, but no one is forcing me. There is love that constrains me. Little inconveniences for some of us. Little inconveniences for the kingdom. And we complain. Please don't get me wrong. I'm not against comfort. But I'm telling you. If it is because you want to be comfortable. That you allow souls to die. And you don't make spiritual progress. Their blood will be on your head. 
Tomorrow morning, we're up teaching school of ministry students from there. We're headed to Zamfara. Coming back Monday morning straight into the counseling session. Why am I doing all this? Am I stupid or I don't know where a retreat center is? That I can just go and lie down and say, let me rest. What drives you, my brothers and my sisters? Please don't say you are a ministry. No. What is it that when you get up in the morning, truly, please take seriously what I'm saying. What drives you? What drives you? Power or fame? What drives your Christian experience? There are some of you, those around you, it's not like they are hardened. Nobody has preached to them. They've been coming to church. You know they are not born again. You know they are not born again. Religion is not being born again. If they are not saved, they are not saved. Period. It's time to talk to them and tell them, I, I want to talk to you. Is it too much to pay and invite them to a restaurant and talk to them about Jesus Christ? Can your 500 naira not go for the gospel? Will it kill you? Will it kill you? What is wrong with three or four of you coming? And just praying for three days. Just praying and fasting. No group, no ministry, no nothing. Just to pray for souls genuinely. Ask people to submit the names of their unsaved ones. And pray. After three days, that's all. Jesus said, if you do this to the least of my brethren. See, let me tell you. The day Jesus comes, we are going to be surprised. Because those you think are the greatest in the kingdom. You will be shocked. To find out that they are not the greatest. Some of us, the men of God that you think will be the greatest, you will be surprised that some of us who have just barely made heaven. Whereas there are people whose entire life, they don't have revelation, they don't have any rema, nobody's inviting them for any ministration. But their heart in life and in death has been committed towards the gospel. There are classmates of ours that have never heard about Jesus Christ. We are ashamed. Sometimes when I pass through ABU campus, I look at the campus and I nod my head. Things have changed. Things have changed. The fire. Many of us are afraid to talk to people about Jesus. Okay, agree that you cannot go for all the crusades and the rest. What of your family members? You grew up knowing your father drinking and smoking and bowing to a God. Have you ever said, Daddy, there's something I want to discuss with you. Say, my father that I know, as if you don't know the Holy Spirit too. What if I talk to him and he insults me? Is that the reason why you will not talk? What if I talk to him and he stops giving me uh, pocket money? What if I tell the brother that this relationship is not born again and let me talk to him about Jesus Christ. Won't it cost me the relationship? I want to marry. Okay. Marry. There are some of us as you are looking at me right now. Even those you are in a relationship with are unbelievers. They are going to hell. You don't care. Who is he? He's a nice guy. Is he born again? Eh, please, everybody is a sinner. If he's a sinner, he's a sinner. Your priority is not love. Your priority is salvation. Please hear what I'm saying. Because on that day, the Lord is going to ask you. Praise the Lord. One last prayer point. Lord, whatever I can do at this level, to contribute to the advancement of the kingdom and soul winning, reveal it to me. Whatever I can do, if you can't preach, you can sow seeds. Please pray. Everybody must do something. What can I do for my family? Do I need to organize a get together? Do I need to celebrate my father's birthday for him so that he will be saved? What can I do at this level? Do I need to buy a card? Do I need to write an article for my family members?
do I need to produce tract? What can I do at this level? Don't say I cannot do anything. With the grace you have, there's something you can do. Please pray. Lord, you gave me a voice. I can sing with it. You gave me wisdom. I can use that as a platform. Lord, you bless me with finances. I can release my wealth for the kingdom. Lord, you gave me a car. My car can be used for the kingdom. You gave me a barbing saloon. It can be used for the kingdom. You gave me a restaurant. It can be used for the kingdom. Reveal to me what I can do at this level it may not be much but let me contribute there's something i can do i can pray i can preach i can finance the kingdom Hallelujah. Listen to me. I can go on my knees and beg you. Don't make this just an emotional thing. It's easy to just feel emotional and just say, wow, because I spoke about hellfire and rapture and books. It's easy for you to be threatened and then just carry the euphoria for one or two days and it dies back take this as a message God is giving you no matter what you have done in ministry if souls are not being saved you are wasting God's time hallelujah please rise up and lift if you wrote your prayer your request if it's in a book just lift it up I want to pray on it listen you are the first agent that will follow up these people don't just pray for an anonymous man of God to evolve from anywhere you are the man of God that God is authorizing tonight to start don't fear their faces I'm not saying you should go and do stupid things without zeal or with zeal and without knowledge just jump into people's houses and inconvenience them start with your family members your family members will not kill you at least you can start from there father we repent in any way we have trivialized the issue of soul winning and lord we know that this is in your heart and you decided to move us this direction We want your heartbeat to become our heartbeat. We want your cry to become our cry. We want your passion to become our passion. Put a piece of your desire for souls in our hearts. And let it be a fire that nothing in this life can quench. Oh, we desire you. We desire you. Put that passion lord i stretch my hands towards these names there are so many people who are going to hell whose names are written some of them are fathers some are mothers lord in the name of jesus we agree as a family of faith that beginning from tonight let there be strength
strange angelic visitations strange angelic visitation force them to go for crusades may they go for meetings may they encounter men and women of god and lord we pray especially for those who are not of the christian faith lord you know that humanly speaking their minds are made up but in the name of jesus christ i pray angelic visitations encounters of jesus christ as they sleep they will see his face as they sleep they will see his face in the name of jesus christ as they sleep they will see the cross they will see the cross it will follow them everywhere they go we ransom their souls from the pit of hell lord we will not stand in heaven and watch our loved ones enter that wide gate of hell we will stand and we will rejoice put a passion in us to win souls let it not just be a religious evangelical thing lord remind us that if we do not win these souls and we let them die that their blood will be upon our heads i pray for everyone i kill timidity from your life whatever makes you ashamed of the gospel i don't care what it is whether your inability to communicate well your poor background complex that you have about yourself that 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 limitation is swallowed up tonight in the name of jesus may my god give you utterance may my god give you utterance may my god give you confidence in the name of jesus christ and i pray that you will not win souls and miss heaven yourself i pray for everyone that the same way we are gathered in the earth like this that is how we will see ourselves on that day we will see ourselves and know ourselves therefore i pray any manner of life represented here listen to me any manner of life that the devil is deceiving anyone into and making it look like it does not matter tonight that power of sin is broken over your life every association every wrong thing that can jeopardize your eternal destiny in the name of jesus christ receive grace to say no to every appearance of evil receive no to receive grace to say no to wicked and ungodly relationships receive grace to cut away from people who do not love god nor value his ways in the name of jesus christ and where you need to stand alone receive courage to stand alone where they mock you and say all kinds of things i release grace for you to still stand i pray for you from the depths of my heart that every weight every habit every attitude you know that can destroy your christian experience and rob you of the opportunity i don't care what it is and how long it has been in the name of the lord jesus christ i pray that that life of pretense dies tonight and i pray for those of you who have been doing things both great and small for the kingdom grace to continue i pray specifically for all the workers in this house i want you to know that your contributions to advancing the kingdom the worship department the ushers one day you will see this record in heaven and the lord will say this is what you did on earth for my kingdom and for those of us who are not serious with the house of god nor the things of god who are just careless 
there is no kind of commitment that you have you don't give for in the house of god you don't pray you don't support the cause of the kingdom i pray tonight that god will speak to you and that for the first time for some of us you will say enough of lukewarm christianity it's time to plunge in and commit myself truly in the name of jesus christ for some of you who have been wounded on account of the gospel you have been misunderstood on account of the gospel i pray for you there is a bomb in gilead there are some of us who have been persecuted because of the gospel you have been blackmailed because of your christian integrity i speak to you do not give up a day of reward is coming there is one who is called the rewarder of them that diligently seek him you are suffering financially today if only you compromise on your christian integrity that man would have given you money now the money is not there but he's telling on you i want you to know that the lord is proud of you he is watching a day of reward and recompense is coming that makes this whole earth adore you home spent with you we'll just sing this song once here I am to here I am to buy One more time. Here I am. for you tonight is to live with eternity in view whatever you need to do to remind yourself I want you to remind yourself life does not end here life do, I want this is the message to you the personal word of the Lord to you that there is more live your life knowing that you will give account of it don't live your life as if you own your, yourself. Live your life as you joke, as you play, huh? as you go around your normal activity. Remind yourself that a day is coming when all that we see today will be no more. Let it not scare you, but it serves as a buffer solution. It will check balance excesses in your life and it will keep you hot for the kingdom. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Father, thank you for tonight. You took us in a way and a dimension that we did not even expect. But Lord, we thank you because this has produced fire in us. I truly believe that from this message, habits and all kinds of things have died a natural death. You will walk back and find out that the things you could not resist, all of a sudden, there is grace for you. A revelation has imparted grace. All of a sudden, things you could not say no to, you will find out that you can look it at the face and now say no. Some of us, many of us, was one of the things that I wanted to talk about. The rate at which pornography and masturbation 
Just give me a minute. Let me talk about these two things. I know that uh, we're out of time. The rate at... No, no, no. Keep standing. We're rounding up already. The rate at which these things are eating up believers. We'll talk on that when we talk on the canal. Not exactly on these things, but I just feel in my personal experience as I talk with people, I found out that these things are about the biggest demons. They are, they are eating up pastors, reverends, apostles, teachers, prophets, well-meaning Christians. There are probably many of us here right now, you are looking at me. It's not like you are bad people. It's not like you don't love God. I don't know how that spirit just came upon the body of Christ. It must be attacked back to hell. Masturbation and pornography, these two things, they go hand in hand. Believe me, you come into a congregation and you'll be surprised at least 60 to 65 percent of that congregation. And it's not, I know I've counseled married men and women who are still involved in pornography and masturbation. You would be thinking marriage will solve the problem. But it didn't solve it. That, to tell you, is a spirit. <laughs> Listen. I said it when I was teaching the school of ministry students. We are here to help you. Don't go to hell for nothing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are some of you, the devil has deceived you. If you open up, will people, you, you really think your situation is the first? I've had men of God, pastors, some colleagues in ministry come to me to say, look, you've got to help me. And for you, if people come to you, it's not an, a situation to start running and say, can you imagine? Even so, so, so person came and met me. And I also want to advise you, be careful who you meet for counsel. Huh? So that you don't just take yourself innocently and say, I'm suffering from pornography or masturbation. And the man of God says, ah, is what I've been waiting for. And then he now takes the advantage. I've spoken with a lot of ladies who have gone to meet men of God, telling them, look, I'm suffering with lust. I can't see men and resist them. And then at the end of the discussion, in the final analysis, the man is adding, adding to the iniquity again. If you're a man of God here, listen to me, and members come to you for counseling, and you end up sleeping with them or doing anything. Stop it. You are going to hell. If you, the Bible says, He that causes every one of these to fall. Masturbation and pornography, two devils. We are going to pray just in one minute. Is that all right if we pray? Please. I'd like you to challenge. You see, the truth is, we are all scattered here. But everyone were the ones who know. I'm not condemning you. It is the truth. Many of us have quoted everything. We have fasted. We have prayed. People come to me and they cry and they tell me, man of God. It was even in the period of fasting. I was fasting three days in the period of the fasting. It's because you need help. Hallelujah. We are going to lift our voice. We are going to say, Lord, we banish this spirit first from our lives and from koinonia and from the body of Christ. Lift your voice and pray. Take it seriously. We curse this spirit to devils that are destroying the body of Christ. Destroying pastors. Destroying men of God. Pray! We curse the spirit of pornography. We challenge it. We challenge it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We declare that we are the sanctified. We are holy, kept, set apart. We are the vessels in that great house that are unto honor. Pray. I challenge that spirit of masturbation of pornography you are a devil from the pit of hell you will not steal away the destiny of the church 
pray for yourself. Pray for this great house. Pray for the body of Christ. We break the power in the name of Jesus. We break the power. We break the power of sin. We break the power of iniquity. We break the power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Let me say this. If you like, say that I'm doing whatever. You have all kinds of junk pictures or, or whatever it is on your phone. All of these seductive images. Go and delete it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Delete it. Break all of those VCDs into pieces. Match them by yourself and keep them out. If you want to see the glory of God in your life, authentic glory, there is a price. Don't let anybody fool you. There is a price. I've touched a very sensitive issue in the body of Christ. Many of you will go back and think about it. Preachers are very afraid of talking about this because many of them, sorry to say it, are victims of it. And I do not condemn it, but it's a strategy. That's why the devil attacks men of God. So that if, as a man of God, I'm involved in pornography and masturbation, do you think I will have the courage to talk about it? What if I am caught? Don't condemn people. There are people who will come and open up to you. It's not a thing of condemnation. You condemn anybody, God will judge you. No man has made you a judge over another. But let me tell you, you can sit down the way you are and allow yourself to keep dying in silence. Do you know for some of us here, probably, this is the one weight that if we can overcome, we will step into certain realms of glory. You have tried. Probably God has told you, go and meet a man of God. But you've not had the courage. Tonight, God is talking about you to remind you that I've been talking to you about it because I love you. Hallelujah. The destiny of the natural man from the perspective of eternity is hellfire. There is no confusion about it. And the terrible thing is that the natural man can be a member of a church can even be baptized in water, can be an elder, a deacon, a pastor, probably. But if you've not had that encounter where you have surrendered your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, that new birth experience is what ushers you and, and grants you access to partake of eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The second man, the second kind of man that the Bible shows us is the carnal man 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 is one who is saved he's confessed jesus christ as his lord and savior however he's still a slave to the flesh and its desires the carnal man is still subject to the ways and the demands of the old nature. I'll take it again. The carnal man is one who is saved. He's saved. He's a believer in Christ Jesus. He believes in the things of God. He's had the new birth experience. But then, somehow he finds out that he's still a slave. And it's going to be the basis of our discussion tonight. A slave to the flesh and its desires. He is still subject to the ways and the demands of the old man or the old nature. Now, I'd like you to know that this is a very serious spiritual condition. The goal of this series, Gaining Spiritual Stature, is to help us to break through the limitations of the flesh and to become spiritual people indeed. I think that I began to say last week that one of the issues that I've seen with the body of Christ 
uh, it may not necessarily be that we're not born again. The truth is many people uh, have been able to have that encounter. They have confessed Jesus. They truly believe in the things of God. But I think that the problem with the church in one word is flesh. One word, flesh. So many believers are still at this second phase. The carnal man. Hallelujah. Primarily, I'm sorry to say it, because most of we preachers that teach people are still at that realm. Are you getting the point now? So, the best we can do is to bring people past the realm of being natural men. Because we ourselves have not studied the spiritual principles that transit men from being natural to being the spiritual ones. Are we following tonight? So, we see a lot of things. We're going to examine this in detail. I'll be very brief. But this is a very serious spiritual condition. Where a man is born again, but he cannot realize his best because there are, you, there, there, there are all kinds of weights that stop us. Is that true? Many pastors today, many pastors, and I tell you sincerely, at least 60 to probably 70% of pastors in the church in Nigeria are suffering from this predicament. The weight of the flesh. There is a grip of the flesh. There is, there is so much carnality. Hallelujah. And I'd like you to follow me because I want us to be able to gain stature in the spirit. That we become men of power. Men who can command kingdom things territorially. Men who can do business with God in deep waters. Hallelujah. Carnality. The Bible talks about being carnal in nature. What is the problem with this kind of nature? There is an issue with it. Let's look at the issue very quickly. What really is the issue? Because many people say, after all, I'm going to make heaven. And you see, let me tell you something. I'm sorry to say it, but many of the teachings that we have marketed around the body of Christ have come in as very sincere ways to accommodate the limitations that come with this realm. There are certain possibilities that the Bible provides that you will never understand when you live at this realm. Are you getting my point? Until you rise past the escape velocity of this life of the flesh, then you will experience the quality, the beauty of being a spiritual man. Say amen. amen. Now, when people have lived in this realm of the flesh all their lives, they try to create all kinds of logical explanations to make it look like, look, there is no way out. For as long as you are in the body this is the predicament that you have to live by. And I want to tell you sincerely that there is a way out. How many of us believe there is a way out? Oh yes. Oh yes. Either Jesus truly conquered sin and the nature of the flesh or he lied to us. Praise the Lord. But it's not enough to just say it. Oh, this and that and that and that. There is a system in the kingdom. A system of transformation. And this is what I'm going to guide us through. The issue with this carnal nature is that, number one, it robs the believer from experiencing the victory that the cross and the blood of Jesus provides. I'll repeat myself. The first issue with this kind of nature is that it robs the believer from experiencing the victory that the cross and the blood of Jesus provides. You can talk about it. But you may never enter into the experience of that reality. There are many people that talk about victory in Christ. We talk about it. But I'm telling you. If we are to be honest with ourselves. We teach a lot. That when Jesus died. He defeated sin. Is that true? He defeated Satan. 
he defeated the grave. The power of sin is broken. And we make bold claims about it. But if we are to be very sincere, many people are still strongly under the grip of this element that we claim that when Jesus died, he conquered. That means something is wrong with our theology. We need to ex either the cross of Jesus Christ, like the worship team sang. They said, where's the power of the cross? I say on Sunday how much I love revival, but then I cannot even read my Bible. And that's the case with many people. It's not like you don't love God. You find out that there seems to be an ability you cannot explain that renders you helpless in the face of certain situations. I counsel a lot of people and when they come to me, they say, man of God, I love God. They even cry. They say, but I cannot understand why this habit or this and that. And, and for some of us, we even engage in certain spiritual exercises. But in the midst of it, at the end of it, you literally feel powerless. And every time we run, people come to us, men of God, all we tell them is, you don't understand or you don't have faith. It's not true. It's not true. Something is really wrong. Because many believers have not been able to reconcile the teachings that we receive in church about the fact that Jesus said it is finished. How many of you believe Jesus truly conquered Satan? How many of you believe Jesus truly conquered the flesh? So why is it that I get born again? I used to sleep around and smoke and drink and do a lot of things, for instance. And then I get born again and I love God. I'm even a member in church. But I find out I'm still a slave to these things. In spite of my praying in tongues. In spite of this and that. Let me tell you. Even Paul the apostle. Encountered certain things. He began to communicate his struggles. I'm going to be showing you. Is there no genuine escape route? Is there no genuine platform? for victory where when you say i am victorious i have broken past certain limits can it not be authentic and true you know because um we don't live like the way it was in the old testament so nobody really knows maybe the private life of anyone so it's easy for us to make a lot of bold seemingly faith claims is that true but the truth is many believers are asking questions. I am yet to see the perfection of the victory of Christ in my life. I love God. Everything the preacher said I should do as my own part I have done. Yet, I seem to be a slave. This is the second realm. And this is where the church is. We establish churches from this realm. As pastors, we hold conferences and conventions with these limitations. And when people come, because as they are talking to us, we are also victims of the same thing they are saying. We can only offer little or no help. Is that true? If a man of God, for instance, is suffering from masturbation and pornography, for instance, and a member now comes and says, Daddy or Papa or whatever, I, I, I'm, I'm, I love God, but I think that there is a challenge in my life. How can the man now help this person when the truth is that this is, is all, it's a question he's asking in the secret. He can wear the suit and do a lot of things, but in the secret. I've spoken with many men of God and there are many pastors that have come for counseling. And they have opened up themselves. Man of God, I love God. But this and that and that area. Some of them have gone for 40 days fasting. Some of them have done a lot of things. Am I being sincere tonight? You know, part of my goal is to discuss some of the things that the body of Christ runs away from. This is why we do not sustain true spiritual power. Is that true? There are men of God that still go back to sleep in the night. And demons still oppress them. They wake up, wonder what has happened. And they still dress and run back to church. I've shared my story. I was, I was a preacher and I was doing well. I was still being oppressed by demons. It was a personal contemplation. How can I come and preach and see miracles. And yet go back to bed and demons come to press my neck. Want to choke me. What a paradox. 
Yet I see the glory of God so much. And I had to be sincere with myself. That's what a lot of us need to do to ourselves tonight. You must open up yourself and say something is wrong. And I'm humble enough to find out what is this thing that is making my prayer life up today and down tomorrow. Some of us, the last time you read your Bible was last Friday and it was here. And you love the Lord. Tonight, God is going to help us in the name of the Lord Jesus. Many of us right now, we are even afraid of ourselves because the truth is we don't know what we can do now. We don't even trust what we can do right now. Praise the Lord. The man of God is afraid of counseling ladies because he doesn't even know what is left. The last time he saw something that emerged from him, it surprised him. Ha! Yet, we just pretend that everything is okay. How could we tell a lie? Do you know this lie is deception? The end of faith is a manifestation where you can walk in victory. Brothers and sisters, if that victory is not established in your life, I am telling you again, something is wrong. This is not the gospel that our fathers carried. There were men who walked upon this earth and demonstrated effortlessly that the flesh can be conquered. Is that true? There are men of God who walked right now it has become so bad that if they see a young man, once you're a young preacher, people just look at you and nod. Say, Tor, may God just help us. Because they can assume and say there is no way this guy is not doing X, Y, Z. Or if there is blood running in your body, no way. It has become an acceptable thing. Because we have seen, not to criticize, but we have seen bishops, reverend, pastors, after 10, 20 years in ministry, they come up and they make all kinds of stupid confessions. A man has been preaching with parishes and branches, and one day he stands before his congregation and says, I need to confess. For the last 15 or 20 years, I have been gay. I like men. How do you explain this? What, what about the crusades? What about the wheelchairs? It's not like something happened one year ago to say, okay, you, where did you go? I mean, you didn't pray. It has been like that in the last 20 years. Yet conventions were still held. Yet powerful faith teachings were being taught. I am the righteousness of God. Sin has no dominion in my body. And we finish all of that and we go back and we know we are slaves. There is a chain that is upon many in the body of Christ. And it looks like we are helpless. I began to study. When I started working with God. After studying E.W. Kenyon. One of the people that I studied very intently. Was Watchman Nee. There are two men that have influenced my life. As far as the victory that the cross brings. Number one is Watchman Nee. Number two Peter Tan. These men demonstrated, I saw it through their writings. And for Peter Tan, he's still alive. I saw these people mentored my life and made it, they, it was very real. They didn't just say it is possible. They showed me how to make it happen. Is that true? See, let me tell you something. The fact that something has been settled in Christ does not mean it will manifest automatically in your life. Are you getting what I'm saying? I keep saying this thing again and again. There are many of us, the way we are now, your friend cannot come and stay in the same room with you. Your friend cannot come and spend weekend with you because you are embarrassed to find out what they may discover. There are many of us, our phones and everywhere are passworded. We are preachers. But they are passworded because even us were embarrassed by what they will find there. There are many people now, if they are to go and check the history of your laptop, the history page in the last three or four days, we will be amazed at the things that you have browsed. The flesh. What is this spiritual element? That refuses to let believers to rise to that position. Where we demonstrate experientially that certain possibilities are real. Listen. 
Let me tell you something. I'm still discussing a few things. Do you know? Look at me. Victory over the flesh is not willpower to resist evil. Willpower is just physical. It is the natural contribution of a man to keep himself holy. Are you getting my point? That's not what I'm talking about. If I see for Lake right now, look at me, and I'm lusting after her in my heart, I'm desiring that, ah, how will I get this lady, for instance, to commit all kinds of immorality with her? And then I let her say, Kai, I square up. Opportunity has not created itself. That does not mean that I am free from that grip. Are you getting my point? There are many people, the reason why certain things have not happened in our lives is that the atmosphere has not been created. It's not like we are that bold. Because when if I stand right now and I'm still suffering from the urge for immorality, I'm still a slave. You are free when the urge leaves you too. Please, are you getting what I'm saying? So all this, all this willpower thing that people try to do, for how long can you use physical strength? I tell you, there is a system in the spirit. And if you do not know that system, get ready for scandal upon scandal in your life. Someone follow me tonight. So it robs the believer from experiencing what you have been professing. Christ, the power of sin is broken. This and that and that and that. And yet, we find out that the truth is we are slaves to sin in many respects. Number two, the issue with this nature is that the believer in this condition will hardly experience sustained spiritual growth. That's number two. The issue with this kind of nature is that the believer that finds himself in this condition of a carnal life will hardly be able to sustain his or her spiritual growth. Many of us will testify that it is almost impossible. You know, when people send me text messages and, you know, they just want to commend me, one of the things they say, and I receive it with all humility, is that, man of God, you have been consistent. We have known you for X, Y, Z years. And it only keeps getting from glory to glory. You know that if you are faking something, time will reveal it. Is, is that true? No, you cannot. If you fake holiness, time will, re it will reveal it. Brothers and sisters. If you fake purity, if you fake certain things, a day will come. There will be a loophole that will reveal that this was not a true conviction. If you fake prayer life, you fake that you are a man of prayer, something in your life will create an occasion and men will say, Kai, it's not true. There are lots of people who have seen them pray. Let's pray, let's pray. You know that this is not a man of prayer. He's just doing it. There is something about a testimony of the altar of incense upon your life. When you see a man of prayer, it's not by jacking and looking macho. There is a testimony that there is an incense that rises on your secret place. If you don't fast and you lie, or you just do general fasting, and you are saying, look, there is always something in the spirit that betrays you. Men cannot see it, but they can discern that what you are saying is not truly you. They can't explain why they are feeling what they are feeling. Every time they stay close to you and they pray, nothing catches them. That's a sign that is a lie. Please, are we, getting, are we getting blessed? The Lord has brought this to help us. We are breaking fallow grounds in the spirit. And I trust that many people will be released tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Sustain spiritual growth. So you find out that a brother or sister is zealous. Loving the Lord. Fasting for days. And after six or seven months, the person now comes back. And says, I don't understand this, you know. I've gone back. And you're like, ah, uh ah. -uh. You mean you that even organized three programs in one week? Say, I've gone back. Do you know why? Satan has an advantage of being the light bearer 
I've told you this. So Satan is not a fool. Satan knows when you are truly delivered from a thing. If you are not, even when you try to break, it's like a slave that there is a long chain. They can allow you to move. So you are just moving and you think it's victory and you reach a point. And Satan says, you think I'm so daft. And then you come back and you find out. Some of us have been even accepted that, see, there is no way out. Everybody is like that. No, everybody is not like that. Yes, everybody is not like that. There is a realm that when you remain, when you hear someone else speaking, you will think they are lying. Certain possibilities only become activated under certain atmospheres. Are you getting what I'm saying? Number three, let's hurry up. The issue with this kind of nature is that it grants access to demonic influences in that believer's life. The problem with remaining in this carnal nature is that it grants access, it still grants access to demonic activities in that believer's life. So it's very easy. That's the reason why you find out that sometimes it looks like in our lives, deliverance is endless. Deliverance is endless. Because it looks like the same weights that we are being delivered from. And then after a while, we return back. Jesus gave us a key in the spirit. And he said it this way. Satan cometh to me. Have you read that scripture? He said, and does not find anything. That means when Satan looks at you, he looks at what belongs to him. And that becomes his point of entrance into your life. So there are many people. Do you know that to an extent... That many deliverance ministries, especially deliverance ministries that do not work with accurate perception. Let me tell you what the devil does. Sometimes the person comes, the man of God is not so anointed. But because these spirits know that their exit and entry into the believer's, the, the believer's life, is, it does not have any restraint. Before the man of God takes his hand to lay on the person, the demons just leave. A nice exit. And the person just gets up and says, wow, I'm free. And then they know that they know what buttons to press in the spirit. And you respond to a nature that belongs to them. And they get back into your life. Very simple. Is someone hearing what I'm saying? That's why for many people they can say, ah, I was healed. Or I came to church. I was delivered. I was blessed. I felt light on my way going home. Something happened. A mysterious fight just evolve itself on your way home with somebody. And you enter and you feel, I'm not normal. Something has happened. Yes, truly, something has happened. It was, oh, watch my knee is such a gift to the body of Christ. That man had an encounter. Many of you who do not know watch my knee. Watch my knee was an Asian. He was locked in the prison for many years. And it was during that time he had encounters with Jesus. And Jesus taught him the principle of spiritual victory over the flesh. Scarce teachings that people don't teach. Please, if you can look for watch my knee's materials, I'd like you to sit on it and grow. It may be uncommon. But I assure you, these truths will make you of dexterity in the spirit. Are we getting blessed? So there are many demonic operations in the lives of people. That's why you can see a pastor, a geo, can just come and say, Rose, when I ask you to, to bring water, did you bring? Before she says, no, he has given her a dirty slab. Ah, no, something is wrong. Oh. Let me tell you, something is wrong. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Or a man of God sees the jeep of somebody else and he now starts saying, you know, the Lord says, give and it shall be given unto you. We are going to examine a few things. Let me rush because I have a lot to talk about. Number four, the issue with this kind of nature is that in its worst state, please write, I'm dictating because I don't want us to miss anything. In its worst state, the believer can lose his salvation through idolatry and rebellion. When this situation becomes acute, 
it sustains the capacity to take the believer to hell. And this is where we get the balance. Notice I told you the carnal man is saved. By the way, let me deliver you once and for all, if you are new in this place, that there is no such thing as once saved, forever saved. Hello? Please hear me. I speak to you as the servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'd like you to throw that theology out of your mind. If once saved, forever saved, I'd like you to justify why Aquila and Priscilla died. Because they were part of the church. What happened to their salvation? Number two, explain to me the mystery of this man in the Bible called Demas. Have you read the story of a man called Demas in the Bible? Paul, the apostle, began to speak and was cautioning people against Demas. Demas, who used to be a faithful brother, who had now deviated from the faith. You can listen to my teaching in the apostate church. And so there are many believers who are on their way to hell and are convincing themselves that I remember in 1995, I think I can remember, you will see somebody in the beer parlor arguing as an elder of a church. He said, let Jesus come and you see whether I won't go. Her baptism and, I, and he believes that based on that, he has his baptismal certificate that he was immersed in water. He has a day. He has the counselor sleep. He even has records of foundation class. And he's justified that even Jesus Christ will admit me to heaven. What a shock. Mm. Hallelujah. What is idolatry in the context that I just used? Idolatry is the worship of other things other than God. Any other thing that is not God Almighty is idolatry. Anything. Let me hurry up. The last point, number five now. The issue with this nature is that it stops the believer from becoming a true lampstand. And a written epistle across his territory of influence. It can stop the believer from being a true lampstand. The Bible says, ye are the light of the world. Is that true? Let me, let me finish the dictation. I know some of us are writing. It can stop the believer from becoming a true lampstand. And a written epistle across his territory of influence. God has given every one of us territories of influence. But when you remain in this nature of carnality, it robs you of the opportunity of becoming a true lampstand. The Bible says, do everything without complaining or arguing. It says, so that you will be called blameless and pure. Children of the Lord, you know, without uh, perversion and this. He said that you will shine like stars as you hold forth the word of life. You see that? John said, I saw seven lampstands. And that talks about the Catholic church, the perfect church, the universal church, the ecclesia of God. And they were all burning. None. You say you, you cannot light a candle and put it under a bush. The Bible says the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. But the fire of the Holy Ghost is the fire that comes to light your candle. So that you can lift it and place it. And men can use your life as a reference. As a template of what godliness is. That when God wants to correct them, you will just use your face. Somebody wants to go to a beer parlor, he just sees a vision of you. God has spoken to him. The person just turns back and says, Kai, now wow. Just like God used Moses and Elijah to represent the law and the prophet, God wants to use our lives as spiritual yardsticks to define to people the scope of what true holiness is, what true righteousness is, what true love is, what true victory is. 
but he's largely not been able to go that far because we have not understood the system that helps us to partner with him. Is God helping someone tonight? Hallelujah. Write this word down, carnal. Let's discuss the word a bit. What does it mean to be carnal? To be carnal means to be sensual. S-E-N-S-U-A-L. To be sensual. Ruled by your senses. That means your activities are only coordinated by the impulses of your senses. A carnal man is one who is ruled by the factors. By factors and agencies other than the spirit of God. The carnal man is the man who is ruled by any other factor or agency that is outside of the spirit of God. It could be any other thing. Once you are not governed by the spirit of God, you are a carnal man. Even if you pray in tongues. That you pray in tongues is not a sign that you are governed by the spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible tells us in the book of Acts how that one time when Philip the evangelist preached the gospel and there were miracles and people got saved. Is that true? When people got saved, he even began to instruct them in the way of the Lord. And then he called on um, um, uh, uh, Peter, Peter and John or Peter and James now, the pillars of the church, to come and get them filled with the Holy Ghost. And the Bible says one of those disciples already born again, when he looked and he saw that Peter was laying hands on people, all of a sudden his flesh came. He said, let me bribe you. And he, he looked at him. He said, what did you say? I thought you went through the counseling class. He said, eh, let me shall bribe you. There was even a man in the Bible called Bar Jesus. Bar what? Bar Jesus. You see, you don't read all those parts. The parts you read, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the quiet waters. No weapon fashion against me shall prosper. Do you know that the issue with many of us as far as our spiritual development is, it's not a complicated issue. It's just our inability to have been taught these truths accurately. That means that it is possible that I am born again. It is possible that I've given my heart to the Lord, but I am ruled. In other words, my impulses in life are by another factor and agency other than the Holy Spirit. Oh yes, that is a possibility. That means a carnal man is a slave to the flesh. What is flesh? Flesh does not just mean body. We see that being interchanged in the Pauline epistle. When Paul begins to write to the church, he uses flesh to mean body like Galatians 2.20. And then he uses flesh to represent the sin nature. So let me define flesh as far as this context is. Flesh is a way of life that is helplessly subject to the appetites. Flesh is a way of life that is helplessly subject to the appetites, comma, the lusts, comma, and the desires of the old man. That is the sinful nature. Let me take it again. Flesh is a way of life that is helplessly, notice my choice of words, helplessly subject to the appetites, the lusts, and the desires of the sinful nature. If that is the reality in your Christian experience, then you are walking in the flesh. I don't care whether you are a pastor of one billion members. That means if you study your life sincerely and you find out that you are helplessly subject to the appetites, the lusts, and the desires of the old man, 
That means the things you used to have lost an appetite for. In fact, to make matters worse, there are certain things we didn't even have appetite for before we got born again. Then when we got born again, we started cultivating a very, very bad desire for those things. Flesh. A way of life that although you are born again, you find out that everywhere you go is controlled by a factor other than the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. So you're eating. There is, you are helplessly under the bondage of gluttony. There is no way of escape. That's flesh. You are helplessly under the bondage of immorality. As a guy, you cannot see a lady. You can't even give a lady a good Christian hug and go back fine. You will need to pray for three days and say, what did I do to myself? Some of you, when you are coming for koinonia, you get scared. Oh, this koinonia ladies again. It's not the ladies. You need to hear this. Let me tell you the truth. There are many people who talk and complain about ladies and say, ladies are seducing us. It is true that nudity and all of these things are bad. But can I tell you the truth? Even if those same ladies wear hijab head to toe, the same thing will happen to the guy. What he needs is to pass through the cross experientially. And that's what I'm going to be teaching. The way of life. It's amazing how many of us are truly not led by the Holy Ghost. We are led by impulses. Oh, I give me money. Let me go and buy with one. I, I must buy this type. There is an appetite that is not sponsored from the spirit. Flesh, carnality. Send me money, Abi. I'm not doing again. Huh? What kind of relationship is this? Love you can't show. I thought I sent you money last week. Send it again. Flesh, carnality. Listen to me. Oh, I must buy this at my level. I should have a, I should have a car. I should have a suit of 200,000. Flesh. Sponsored. You have become a victim of certain appetites that are outside of the jurisdiction of the spirit. You have refused to allow him to gain total control. And this is how, this is what has sponsored many messages in the body of Christ. Most of these Solomon messages we preach in the body of Christ are a revelation to a spiritual man that we are still slaves to these things. Hallelujah. A lot of people, when somebody buys a new car, they, they come and you see what they do around the car. Mwah, 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 mwah. Seven prophetic kisses around the car. And you see them do a lot of things. And you are wondering, that is claiming... I guarantee you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ who died for us, that is flesh at work. Trust me. Trust me. There are people who are praying. There are many of us, if your phone gets missing, your prayer life will suffer for one month to pay the price of the absence of your phone. Flesh. Controlled by an impulse that is not the spirit of God. If they steal your money, your friend, including your friend who was not around, he didn't even know you had the money. You lied to everybody, you didn't have money till they stole it. Where is my money? The friend said, I don't know. He said, all of you must produce it. We will take up this case. How much? 500. <laughs> Yet for one week, say, it's not like, nothing leaves me just like that. I know my right. While you think it's civil right, I'm revealing to you right now, that is not civil right. Is flesh on rampage. Flesh unrestrained. Hallelujah. All kinds of things. A man of God is preaching in a church. And he just jumps around. And just feels like enjoying himself. And you know. All kinds of stupid things happen in the church. Let me tell you the truth. It's not about age. It's about a position that the spirit keeps you. You can be 60 years and still be a victim of flesh. Are you hearing what I'm saying? A way of life sponsored by factors that are outside of the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. Flesh. 
a lifestyle that has determined who you marry. If it's not a rich man, don't even come near me. Because if you come near me, I don't want to tell you we have suffered. And some of our parents have crystallized the warning. They have already told you, see, you too, you are seeing what has happened in this house. You better don't bring anything that puts us in trouble. Yes, mommy. And so while the Holy Ghost is saying, look this way, you are saying, God forbid, back to sender. I know what I want. We have composed songs that we thought came from the throne room. But these songs were a way of spiritualizing the existence of flesh in our lives. Hallelujah. A church member, one week to church service, you are depressed over what to wear on Sunday. You can't pray. You can't fast. You are just wondering, what did I wear three Sundays ago? I think it was green. Kai, I'm sure people must have seen me. Let me not fall my hand. Let me assure you, it's not excellence. This one has, there is a boundary of excellence. It will cross the boundary and it has become flesh. It's not organization. Let's not confuse these things. Flesh at work. Hallelujah. Flesh has made many of us to disown our parents. Your father is a carpenter. You live in a small house. That, but because there is, there is the pride of life. When people come, you just say, mm, this is one of just my relatives. He likes disturbing me. This is your real father. You lie that your father is abroad. Till today, nobody has known. You make a mysterious call and say they called you abroad. You are not in any relationship. You told a lie. My boo is abroad. It's not any abroad. It's not anywhere. Come on now. Flesh. Hallelujah. I, I hope as you are laughing, you are really hearing what God is saying. Because this is a very serious issue. I wonder why you are laughing. It's a very, very serious issue. Flesh. Right. The ultimate sign of carnality. This is where the rubber hits the road now. In the next one minute, you are going to know where you stand. The Lord revealed this directly to me. The ultimate sign of carnality is what I call uncontrolled lust. Period. The ultimate sign that you are a carnal believer is uncontrolled loss. The word loss there doesn't just mean immorality. You can put in bracket desires and appetites. The moment your appetites cannot be controlled, you are a carnal believer. Sex is good. It was put as a blessing, a consummation of marriage. If you cannot wait, you are a carnal believer. Wealth is good. Wealth is great. But if you cannot follow through with the spirit, many people have gone to herbalists because they want to prove a point. Even in our homes, I want to be the first person to build a house. I want to be the first person to marry. I want to be the first. What will we do with the first? What will it do to you? I want to be the first person. God forbid, my younger sister can never look finer than me. Blah, 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 blah. I'll pour acid on your face. Flesh. Flesh. Mm. The ultimate sign of carnality is uncontrolled desire. The moment your desires are beyond your control, you are walking in the flesh. Whether you are a pastor, Listen to me. There are many of us, if we are to be sincere with ourselves, there are things that we can control, but there are things we cannot control. The devil cannot throw you with money, but women, ah! He won't even need to try twice. There are certain people, the devil cannot throw you with women or money, but anger. Once the devil wants to get you, you can break bottle of minerals. And wound somebody, your fellow pastor. I said that's to tell you that the fact that I'm wearing this collar doesn't mean I'm a fool. 
Spirituality doesn't mean I'm, I will remove my shirt and wound you. Carnality. There are many of us you can control everything aside from movies. Aha. You wake up by four o'clock. You leave food to burn in the kitchen. You are watching movie. When you are about to go, you pause it quickly and you run. The latest movie that comes out, you would rather use the money for a retreat or anything. Just you are fasting. It's true you didn't eat, but you spend the whole time watching movies. I don't care whether it's Jesus of Nazareth, whether it's, it's Lord of the Rings, whether it's whatever. There is an addiction. So when I talk of loss, this affinity is carnality. Let's pray in tongues for one minute. Just pray in tongues and let it just sink down. Tonight you are face to face with destiny. And you will have to make a decision. Oh Lord, I want to rise. There is a height in the spirit that I must attain. There is a height in the spirit. No more pretense. I'm ready to confront my fears. Something is wrong and whatever it is, I tap into the supply of the spirit. Oh, there is a way out. There is a way out. Hallelujah. John chapter 2. First John. Please let's run. First John chapter 2. Emmanuel. All the world is calling your name. Emmanuel, when you come again, Emmanuel, and the church will see your holy face, Emmanuel, when you come to reign. First John chapter 2 from verse 15 okay I thought it was projected 2 verse 15 John was a very strange apostle because he encountered God in very strange ways and John was helping us to manage the predicaments that come with this level in a bid to become true spiritual men and he had this to say everyone read one to read stop the word world there talks of the social system and all its attractions. And the word love there is not the word agape. It's not the word filial. Agape is the highest form of love. God's own kind of love. Filial is brotherly love. The highest form of earthly love. The love between a man and, 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 and a woman and all of that. But the word used here is called eros. Is the word lost. Don't develop a craving, an affinity, an uncontrolled desire for this system and all that it has to offer. Are you getting my teaching now? So it's not just talking of love in terms of the same love for God so loved the world. No. The word for God so loved the world is the word agapeo. Agape. Unconditional love. That stems from a heart of purity. But this is not it. Paul is saying love not the world. In other words, I mean um, John. is saying in this system. There are many things that can attract you. An expensive phone. The latest car. Latest we've on, Latest suit. There are all kinds of things. That you can have affinity for. And, Paul, and, and, and John is saying. If you are not careful. Although you are born again, 
you can begin to develop an uncontrolled affinity. Sometimes you may call it passion, but you may not know when passion graduates into an affinity. When you can kill because of something, when you can compromise your Christian faith because of something, it's no longer passion. It has become eros. Many of us can tell lies for a relationship. You don't care. Many of us can reduce your age for work with civil defense. You are 35, you said you are 24. The bank says minimum 27 years. You were 27 years since. Since. But you said, Kai, I desperately need a job. The world must work. And you went and reduced your age, for instance. I'm not condemning you. But I'm telling you that it's a reality that you must rise beyond. It's amazing. As a lady, you love God, but because you are broke, a married man looks at you and says, beautiful lady. And you want to move, but your mouth responds on its own. Yes, sir. Well done, sir. And your brain is saying, within this course, he says, stay behind. I've been suffering. And the man says, are you free? He says, of course, I'm free. But you are a Christian. Maybe I'm speaking prophetically. Who knows? To someone sitting right here and looking at me. You know where you came from. All was not well from last koinonia till today. There are still mysterious phone numbers. You save this name as grace. You save this name as, as, as mommy. But it doesn't matter. That's how far your Christian experience can go. Once it comes to your desires, there are many of us when we are broke, everybody knows you are not a Christian again. Even if it is 2,000 that is left, you just want to see money around you. Even if you don't have anything to do, once you see money, you can lie down it and roll and say, thank you, Jesus. Even if you don't have anything to do with it. You are on the way and you find out that all you have is your transport. You will go back and pack more. You just want that security. Errors. An affinity that is satanic. You bought your car. Even the person washing your car, you almost slapped him because of the kind of sponge he was using to wash the car. Use foam. I spent five million on this car. My car. Nebuchadnezzar. He said, I have built myself this kingdom. God said, you will become a beast for seven years. So John is saying, love not the world. There are some of us, we don't love the world, but we love what is in it. He said, neither the things that are in this world. Neither the things that are in this world. And this is what the apostle says. If any man has this affinity for the world, the conclusion of the matter is what? The love of the father. That means if you have errors, for this cosmos, that means the agape of God is not at work in you. That means I can see your love for God by how much the things of this world mean nothing to you. Are you seeing it now? The higher and the hotter your love for God gets, the more you know I can lose this. Thank God for this big house, but it can go. And I will not die. Many of our parents had stroke the day their car caught fire. How much did they buy the car? 1.5. They just fell down and got up and there was stroke because the brain was not functioning well. Ah! Some of you, just because you saw your CGPA, five, maybe 1.5 and five carryovers, you went and bought, what's this rat poison? You bought rat <laughs> you bought rat poison. There are many of us that our parents are looking at us like investment. The same way you have investment in the bank. That's how they are looking at you. What did you get? 1.5. It's almost like telling the person your investment is going down. And your father says, I will kill you. And you go and buy rat poison. Is that your definition of life? 
And some of us, our lust has been worsened by the mindsets that our territories bring. Is that true? Once you are 25 years as a lady, they say you are not married, just like that. What is wrong? Are you driving men away and you leave feeling bad? You say, God, see, me, I'm tired of all this mockery. And he say, Lord, give me a man or I die. No, you won't die. God will give you a man, but that or I die, remove it. That was not part of the prayer point the Holy Ghost gave you. That one came as a result of lust. 16. For all that is in this world is categorized into three. Everybody say three. Everything you can desire is categorized into three. What is the first one? The lost, the eros, the affinity that comes by reason of the fact that you have eyes. You see that your, your eyes can be a gateway to chain you. Right? All of a sudden, I'm seeing Ayomi this, um, what they call this thing? Your necklace. And I go and get into fasting. Fasting that was motivated by lust. Oh Lord, let my father know no rest. That hundred thousand must come out. Your parents could afford a simple phone of five thousand. They say, manage first. You insulted your mother. When you came, you were saying, Lord, a partner must arise. I don't care from where. And you go to prayer band, prayer department. Benga, I have a problem. There is a particular breakthrough I'm trusting God for. Whereas that breakthrough is phone of 100,000. You have disturbed everybody about that thing. I must get this phone before the end of this month. Because you saw it. If you were blind, that kind of loss will not come. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So the Bible calls it the lust that is sponsored by sight. There are many things that happen to our Christian life when we saw something. The Bible says when Eve saw that the tree was good, the fruit was good. When she saw, when she saw, when she saw, the Bible said how that um, David was roaming about and he saw. Everybody say he saw. Some of you, the trouble of your life started when you saw. You entered a boutique you should not enter and you saw. And you wrote your prayer request based on all the things that you wrote. Shoes of 40,000. Gucci Rush 25,000. As you are not married you know, for your everyday life. You have already written your wedding budget. If he doesn't give me 2.5 million, who are you? What sort of loss is this? I can't use with one of one five. Me? At my level? No, come on. I'm more than that. Who told you? Who told you you are more than that? I can tell you who told you. The preacher. The lost driven preacher who is obsessed all about suits and shoes and travels abroad. He's the one that told you that kind of news and said you are bigger than that. Shout and bigger than I say, yes. Say, do all within your power. By the end of this month, you should get out of that realm. Some of you are supposed to be having jeeps, and you get up and you dance and you are happy. You do not know that that is igniting something that may not be accurate. Hallelujah. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, sorry. Okay, we're talking about the eyes. Number two is the lust of the flesh. Now, this flesh talks of your body. Look at me. Let me tell you something. This body you are wearing, if you do not know how to bring this body under control, it will surprise you. Let me tell you some things about the body you don't know. The body does not know how to, to see consequences. It only responds to pleasure. That's why a man at the point where he's driven sexually can sleep with a little girl like this our baby here a lady that is his granddaughter because at that point the body does not know how to read consequences it only knows how to respond to desire are you hearing what i'm saying the lust of the flesh
Samuel saw Eliab and when he looked at him, he was broad chested. And he looked and said, ah no, this is the kind of person, macho and great. God said, no way. That's not how I judge. There is one smelly boy in the wilderness. That's the one I've anointed. Hallelujah. The lust of the flesh. There are many of us that we are driven by our body. Whatever your body wants, you give it. And by body, I don't just mean immorality. Food. Some of us are gluttons. You eat everything. Even if you don't want to eat it, you want to lie down and touch it. It's within my reach. Lust of the flesh. Look at me. Let me prove to you that many of us are suffering from lust of the flesh. Go back to your room and see every possession you have. How many of them are you really using? Yet you will never give out any because you think it's good for me. You have 20 suits. You are not a minister of the gospel. You will never give it. The Holy Spirit says, so it you said back to sender. Because you thought it's a demon spirit. Praise the Lord. Whatever will make my body feel good. There are some of you, you bought your Bible from Jordan Bookstore, 750 naira. Yet your perfume is 15,000. Lost of the flesh. Ah, you thought I wouldn't talk about it. Come on now. Yes, if you see a little rash on your hand, you will not just go to pharmacy and treat it. You will deworm yourself. You will take care of yourself. If you are looking and say, Kai, it looks like I'm getting fat, ba. You can pay for 50, as much as 50,000 naira. You can get up and jog. You can pay that price and not complain because you want your body to be at its best. Hallelujah. If there is a small boil around your eyes, you go and buy 15,000 naira eyeglass and wear it for two days and take every kind of antibiotic and force that boil. While the antibiotic is working, you are using hot water. Go down. Don't embarrass me. Go down. That's how far you can go for your body. But to pray for one hour, something brings a weight on you. And once you just pray, you are finished praying and you found out that it's just, it's just 10 minutes. And say, well, that's the most important thing. It's not about longevity. Is God speaking to someone tonight? The lust of the flesh. I will never, never exalt the quality of my spiritual stature above the comfort of my body. No way. If I eat food of 5,000 naira, that means my spirit man must eat food of 10,000 or 15,000 naira. Are you getting what I'm saying? Some of us to fast. If you are not fasting, you can even stay till 12. And I'm not, do you know that I found out that most of the glutons are the thin people like me? You eat and the moment you finish, you will just ask the other person, you are not eating, ba? You, you will be looking at it as if you don't like it. You say, take it. You say, eh, no, Kai, I don't like eating this kind of food so much. And you bring it and you will be playing and gisting and level it there again. Two of you will go somewhere. You ate one bowl of food by three. You added another one before you came for koinonia. When you went to branch to your friend's house, you still added something. Right now, you are waiting for me to round up. Welfare, donut, and zobo. You will buy four. Your friend will beg you, you will still cut from it and eat. Let me tell you. Hold on, hold on. Don't laugh. Something is wrong. Something is wrong. It may not be demonic, but it's a weight. It's part of the reasons why you cannot break through in the spirit. Sometimes I sit down and I ask the Lord. I say, Lord, what am I doing to my body that I'm not doing to my spirit? I take care of my body. But many of us, the entire scope of our lives, my body, my body, it must be fresh. Your cream will finish, will be trekking around Zaria by 10, 10 p.m. 
you must get the cream. They say, hey, just use this Vaseline in the morning before you know. The last time I used Vaseline was when I was 12 years old. You can go that far to keep this body fresh. Listen to me. 10 minutes and your, this body becomes empty. It lies down. I've been in the mortuary a number of times. And brothers and sisters, I saw people who I know were nice people. Fresh skin, handsome guy, beautiful lady. But at that point, the body does not hold any weight. It is the content of your spirit that now matters. You eat spaghetti at the expense of your spiritual growth. You buy anything at the expense of your spiritual growth. I'm not saying don't take care of yourself. But if you allow this body to be the governing factor, you want to go and eat and the Holy Ghost is saying, stay, there's something I want to tell you. That hunger, you can't control it. Carnality, errors, an affinity. You want to buy with one and the Holy Ghost says, sow the money. He said, Kai, you want everybody to now, Kukuma say, I don't have money to put another with one. Who cares? Please, is God speaking to someone? And then finally, which is the most dangerous of three of them, is the pride of life. Let me tell you what this means. Pride that comes as a result of accomplishment. It's not called pride. It's called pride that is developed as you walk through life. All of a sudden you found out that without reading you nailed five points. All of a sudden you found out that there are certain things around your life that seems to make you notable. You are exceptionally handsome. You are exceptionally beautiful. You speak exceptionally. All of a sudden you found out that you are the object of envy. Everybody uses you as their reference. Your picture is secretly hidden on their phones. Oh God, make me like X, Y, Z. And like Nebuchadnezzar, you will arise. And you will tell yourself, wow, I didn't know that I was this great. And you come to a point where you tell God, Lord, the truth is I have received enough accolades with or without you. I am contented. Pride of life. When you are celebrating your 30 years birthday and you find out that there are three jeeps, you are worth 50 million naira. You are above your contemporaries. You are working in a job that they are giving you 450000 You laugh. Larger than life. I have arrived. When I say preacher, God honors you with grace and anointing. The sick are being healed. There is a demonstration of the spirit in your ministry. You never come and struggle. Other men of God are struggling and scrounging. But for you, the heavens are opened. The tendency. It is very difficult to acknowledge God in the face of good things. Because we always want people to see the effort we put to make things happen. Is that true? So I rather say, I did it. God helped me. I built this empire by my hands. My five points, Abba. Even if I close my eyes and I write the exam like this, I will still get five points. My job, I'm the best staff. Even them, they know. If I leave that job now, they are dead. That company is standing because of me. The pride of life. I am the youngest in my family, yet everybody bows to me. The firstborn sees me and calls me, sir. That's what Lucifer said. He said, I will arise. I will exalt myself above the stars. When I look at other angels, compared to their light, it's like the sun and the moon. And so I know, everybody knows in heaven, that after the Trinity, I'm next in line. It's not a thing of argument. And so let me just exalt myself. Some of us here looking at me, what will destroy us and stop us from being spiritual is pride. You sit with people after five minutes. You've told them every accomplishment of your life. I was in a meeting on the, the other day and uh, I stretched my hands and 70 people just fell. 
How many wheelchairs? Is it 10 blind eyes or 12? Sir? We didn't even have time to count. Pride of life. I'm the youngest entrepreneur. I'm a multi-millionaire as you see me like this. It's just that I'm humble. I'm a multi-millionaire. Pride of life. I can't come out. Every man that sees me, they should let me rest. They are all disturbing me. I'm even tired. I don't know what to do again. Say there are other ladies. They should disturb them. Pride of life. We all know where you are going to. Pride of life. Hallelujah. When you believe that you can exist outside of God, it is called pride. When you find it an embarrassment to acknowledge Christ as being the ultimate reason, Behind your success is called pride. There are many people today, by extension, they cannot acknowledge the impact that people have made in their lives. Hallelujah. I know people who were raised and trained by certain spiritual figures in the body of Christ. But now that they have a reason, they say, this is one of the people that contributed in my life. He taught me some things here and there. Here and there. Whereas the foundation of their Christian experience to acknowledge and say, God, use this person. He's such an influence in my life. They feel if I say it, people will feel me too. Now I have sons too in ministry. Pride. Some of us come to a point where we cannot even greet our parents. You can't bend down and greet your parents with dignity and respect. Because your father calls you sir. My father calls me sir. My own biological father. But I will never. Until Christ comes. Nothing will ever make me. Look at my father. And disrespect him. Even if I'm going for a ministration. And there is protocol. And I see my mother carrying something on her head. I will leave it. And go and pick it up. Let the suit go places. When did you lose your sense of acknowledging God? The Bible says, in all your ways, acknowledge. It didn't say talk about him. Acknowledge. You know what it means to acknowledge? If we are to acknowledge our daddy prof here, we are going to say, everybody arise. Let us appreciate and recognize the presence of our daddy. And then we will clap and acknowledge him. Then the program can continue. That's what it means to acknowledge God. Not that in the middle of your life, you say stop because you are feeling guilty. So okay, let's recognize God. God, thank you. Let's continue. Pride. It says it's not of the Father, but it's of the world. When you find out that you have extreme craving for pleasure and comfort, when you have extreme craving for material things. Material things means anything. Anything at all. When you have extreme cravings to satisfy the appetites of your body. Be it food. Be it clothes. Be it desires. When you find out that you have extreme cravings for recognition and position. See, there are some of us here that as quiet as we are seated, the way we love position and power, you can kill for it. Including some of us who are ladies. You look humble, but let God join you to a man of God. That's when the two you will come out. Mama. There's a seat for mama. The day you see somebody sit down. Mama sit. Mama sit. Who are you? To sit down on mama's seat. There are some people you cannot come and quietly. You are a great man of God. But to come and sit down quietly. No, it won't happen. All hail apostle Joshua Selman. The man who has raised 25 dead people. And cast out demons at will. And everybody recognizes him. And an entourage comes. Hail Joshua Selman. Many of us, that's our secret desire. That's why you found out that every time you keep seeing yourself anointed in the dream, it has never happened physically. Because God wants to make sure you listen to this message. Hallelujah. 
Is that true? Many of us secretly, you crave recognition. Recognize me. You walk together as a group and suffer. When you go somewhere, they say, who did it? You say, I'm the one. Ah. And maybe your own contribution was just critique. You didn't even do anything yet. You say, I'm the one. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. Hallelujah. You must not be embarrassed to acknowledge Christ. See, what I'm teaching you will make you a spiritual man. I am absolutely nothing outside of Christ. I'll give you two keys right now that will transit you to becoming a spiritual man. We're going to pray shortly. To become a spiritual man, the first thing that must happen to you is death to the flesh number one death to the flesh romans chapter 13 verse 14 you must die to this way of life that craves to sponsor a desire that is not of god romans 13 verse 14 i like all of us to read please it's projected let's hurry up one to read And make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust thereafter. Make no provision. Make no provision. Do not create an atmosphere for that manner of life to thrive. Make no provision. What does it mean to die to the flesh? It means to sustain or rise to a spiritual state where your spirit, your soul, and your body can effortlessly withstand the pressures, the lusts, and the cravings of the flesh. I'll take it again. To rise to a spiritual state where your spirit soul and body can effortlessly withstand the pressures the lusts and the cravings of the flesh oh there is such a possibility in the spirit that you can rise you become a spiritual man when you die to the flesh that means you can prepare food for me to eat right now but when the holy ghost says it's time to fast i still sustain the spiritual capacity to turn that plate upside down and say i wanted to eat it oh i like salad i like fruit salad but at the demand of the spirit without argument it can go hallelujah yes i love my wristwatch but at the demand of the spirit it can go thank god for the money in my bank account but if the lord says so it without thinking twice i can go to the atm and withdraw it i can be in a lovely relationship i like the guy and god says i'm i require that relationship as a sacrifice and you don't say god kill me just kill me hallelujah there is a lifestyle that you are living and because of the customized dealing of god let me tell you something god works with us differently on account of certain the scope of your work with god he may give you certain extra rules that are not for others are you getting my point is the personalized dealing of the spirit to position you for the unique place he's taking you mm. so there are times that other people you don't come to my house and find me watch movies there are few times few times 
that have watched even i'm talking of christian movies because it's a sacrifice i cannot generalize it it's not a burden on you but it's a sacrifice that i must take on account of a position that i represent for the body of christ are you understanding what i'm saying listen part of the benefits of working with the spirit is he begins to give you instructions that are unique to your dealings with him it may not be so for everybody there are ladies who do not wear trousers and that came as part of the customized dealings that god gave them because of where he's taking them to there are ladies who don't even they, they barely apply makeup just very mild just very basic because god has shown them maybe that they are going to become a man of god's wife and because of that position that they occupy certain sacrifices certain lifestyles must be placed on the altar so that it will make them to be perfect compliments for that man and on account of that the holy ghost will draw them into an experiential dealing are you learning something now hmm. there are certain people god will give you certain things i don't wear chains you don't see rings around my hand i won't criticize someone for wearing chains and all of this but on account of what i represent and on account of the kind of message and the spiritual paradigm i have been committed to give the body of christ i will need to maintain a life of modesty that can minister to all and sundry are you understanding what i'm saying if that does not happen to you you are still carnal if the demands of the spirit of god on you is too heavy for you you are carnal who is god speaking to tonight other people can pray for one hour but because god has called you into a particular ministry based on you and god a measure has been drawn that you must at least pray for two to three hours a day without compromise whether it is 30 30 30 minutes there must be a system between you and god that becomes the rule your own unique pathway to spiritual progress any other formula will not work for your spiritual upkeep because god has revealed to you your unique blueprint there are things i do every week i may not advise people to do it you may not sustain the spiritual capacity to do that kind of thing it may be too much sacrifice but that is the kind of foundation that can host the kind of anointing he has given me if you run short of that standard it will kill you there is a minimum time of interaction that i must have with the spirit of god in a week because i know that if i delve into error i'm going to confuse too many people so i thank god for the crowd i thank god for the apostolic reach we have over 10,000 plus members on facebook i cannot afford to confuse these people and therefore i wait to make sure that that which comes from the spirit is in sync and that will require fasting that will require praying it may not be like that for you but that is the building that helps me to carry the anointing who is god speaking to tonight because there are many of you god has begun to carve out a map for your spiritual progress but you have compromised it because you want to be like everybody return to the pattern of your building and you will see yourself rise there are some of you the lord has told you that I will meet with you from 1 a.m. to 3 or 1 a.m. to 2. God told you that most of his encounters with you will be in the night. But right now you have God. Sleep has become an idol. Lost of the flesh. You want your body to rest. Ah, it's raining. And every time he comes to that garden of Eden, you are not there. And there are mysteries that he wants to give you. Other people can be strolling on the street and God can say, park your car. But for you, part of the blueprint he gave for your unique, the, the blueprint that will make you a spiritual man. But you have compromised on it because you want to become like everybody. There are some of you, God told you that you must listen to at least one koinonia message every day. It may not be like that for everybody. You have not even had the, the, to buy a hard drive of 15,000 
but in, in one week you have bought clothes useless things tonight God is asking us to return to the pattern that makes men truly spiritual can I tell you something I submit to you many of the things that we do in the body of Christ this is not how God trained me this is why when I look at many people they are surprised that they are not seeing the glory of God there is a pattern if you follow the apostolic blueprint that God gives for building men I guarantee you no matter how weak you are you must become strong There are many of us, the grace of your spiritual development is tied. You see, there are times in the spirit where God will demand you to pray more than usual because there are certain realms you need to access. And there are, the first hour of that prayer is to contend with the powers and create the portal to hear his voice. You have not even started prayer request. You are praying in tongues yet. And that prayer is aligning your spirit to that frequency of the Holy Ghost where you can begin to hear his voice secrets that make men powerful in this realm let me tell you brothers and sisters there is a path of spiritual progress there is a pathway in the spirit when you find it and follow it you will become powerful indeed it is not a unique thing for, for many people there is a price there is a price to be spiritual. You see why I talk against some of these messages we preach around? I tell you there is a price. You want to see the glory of God in your life? Stay on course with the building. You must die to the flesh. Death to the flesh also means attaining a position in your Christian experience. Attaining a position in your Christian experience where your craving for food your craving for bodily satisfaction your craving for pleasure your craving for fame loses its power and its dominion over you you like food but it can go you are a married man it's a good thing to meet husband and wife but there are times that you can be able to discipline yourself so that you can access certain things in the spirit you like going out for picnics you like visiting friends you are a social person but when God places a demand the moment you hear the headquarters calling at once every other thing becomes secondary that's a spiritual man you have died to the flesh truly there is a lady you are planning to ask out You've been planning to ask her. You plan that tonight, after Koinonia, tonight is the night. If you are going to die, you will die. You have already rehearsed. Your friend told you it's, it's okay. What you can say will work for you. But while you are sitting, God says, hold on a bit. Just give two weeks. I need to prepare her to answer you. Say, ha, ah, how long, oh God? Hope the fast make the heart weary. If you are a spiritual man, your only language is yes, sir. When you become a true man of the spirit. See, these are the uncommon postures that men can have that makes devils to run away from them. Father, if it be thy will, let this cup pass over me. If it be thy will. I don't want to have to go through this separation. However, not my will. That's the language of the spiritual ones. Oh, not my will. Mm. Not my will. But your will be done. If it means me staying without marriage, not my will, oh God. If it means me dropping my degree, I know I went to school and I got masters. And God says, I'm calling you into the ministry. Not my will. You want to go to London? And God says, no. I'm navigating you to all your state. You say, me or your oh god i'm from the north nevertheless not my will not my will not my will from today i want you to begin to wake up by 12 or 1 just 12 to 1 and sit down in an atmosphere of worship i want to talk to you oh lord based on my work i come back late but i trust you to supply the grace not my will but your will ay, 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 
when was the last time you said not my will no it must be my own it is my own my altar is calling you oh god my altar is calling you oh god my sacrifice is calling you it's good to like ladies but if you cannot create a boundary then you are not a spiritual man it's good to like honor receive honor when you are given but brothers and sisters when it does not come it should mean nothing to you you should be able to remove your 50,000 naira suit and drop it and say yes you should be able to roll your wivon in his presence and say Lord I was nothing when you picked me up who is God speaking to today I know you are the hottest lady but how much can you die to the flesh and its appetite must you go and visit the man must you visit him every time every time you go to his house he's sleeping with you and God told you stop it stop it must you go there oh it's just Kaduna is a stone throw that is a sacrifice that you should be able to say Lord for the excellency of my spiritual progress I give it up who is God speaking to go and delete all of those things and say I'm, I'm, it's, it's over I'm ready to arise I'm ready to be strong I'm ready to walk in truth let no sacrifice be too much when you hear his voice let the call be yes Lord yes Lord yes to the fasting yes to the prayer yes to the discipline yes to the sacrifice yes to the delay yes to the mockery yes to the ridicule yes to the misunderstanding i will still go into it if i know you are with me papa deboye said something he said if the lord asked him to leave this work now and go to another country that the only thing is that he's going to say lord will you be with me if God says yes, he is going to go. I love that song. Oh, oh, oh yes, Lord. We will obey. Help me worship him. Yes to your will, Lord. Yes to your way. Enough of fighting with the demands of the Holy Ghost. Let me give you the last one. So the first one is death to the flesh. No matter how late tonight we must pray and ask the Lord to end this flesh thing in our lives. Look at me. Anything you cannot give God, it must die in your life. I'm preaching to you anything you cannot give God anything you cannot give God I like you to scan your life in one minute and look at what it is that you know truly if God makes a demand it cannot go that is the idol that has stopped you from the next level number two becoming a spiritual man entails walking in the spirit Galatians chapter 3 from verse 16. The ultimate antidote to conquering the flesh is walking in the spirit. It's not enough to die to the flesh. You must walk. What's that? Galatians 5, not 3, sorry. 5.16. 5, 16. 5 16. It says, this I say, then walk in the spirit and if you truly walk in the spirit whatever that means when that happens in your life it says you shall not what 
that means that is the only way walking in the spirit becomes our true biblical recommendation for conquering the loss of the flesh if you do not walk in the spirit you will never be a spiritual man many people think being spiritual is that you pray many people think being spiritual is that you fast many people think being spiritual is that you are a man of god or you are a ministry or being spiritual is that you look at ladies and run away many people be, think being spiritual is that you have been born again for 20 years no sir no sir when the flesh still has control over you when you cannot say no you are still carnal you are still carnal you are still carnal there are times in your life god will demand certain things he plans to give you back he just wants to help you grow and in that interim he will say give it to me abraham take isaac offer him as a bond offering and then at the end you will find out that the real offering has been kept god didn't have anything to do look at the prophet god told him to eat cow dung for one year have you read your bible animal feces mix it and eat for one year god further told him to lie down on one side of the bed one side of the bed for one year these were men who could do anything if there are things you cannot do for god don't criticize men who have given their all are you getting what i'm saying there are some people who can do anything because they've given up ah deliverance from worry give it up what does it mean to walk in the spirit two things quickly number one it means to depend on the grace and the power that is supplied by the person of the holy spirit what does it mean to walk in the spirit depend on the grace and the power that is supplied by the arrival of the holy ghost in your life when he comes into your life he comes with grace this is the true teaching of grace he comes with an ability power that can help you brothers and sisters let me tell you if that power is not working in my life if i were left to just be joshua selman maybe the children that i will have will be like your luxurious hostel by now humanly speaking i'm a young man humanly speaking all of the encumbrances of truthfulness can find expression but when you lean on a superior grace there is an ability of the spirit i had a scripture years ago let me show you that scripture jude jude 24 i think Jude 24. It says, Now unto him. Am I right? Please look for it. That's right. Now unto him that is able. Everybody say able. Able. Look at me. The Bible says God is able. That means it is within his power to supply grace. Not that he will do it for you. He will supply the spirit power, the strength, the spiritual impetus, the energy. Now unto him that is able to keep you from masturbation, keep you from pornography, for real, keep you from immorality, although you have done it all your life, but there is one, there is a supply that the Spirit of God can bring to your life. Many of you are praying in tongues, but you have not experienced the power of the Holy Spirit the keeping power the staying power the power that can make you look at a lady and say you are such a pretty lady and still go back and sleep sound it's not normal it is of the holy ghost may someone catch a revelation tonight and come out of certain things forever listen my father used to suffer from anger and it affected me 
while I was growing up, I found out that I could be temperous. I could just get angry and react. Very hot tempered and I mean my patience was very short. But when I found out that there is a supply of the spirit, you've been trying it with willpower. This is the teaching that we call the teaching of the law. Trying to use your biological ability. Are you getting my point now? Trying to say Joshua Selman, I am this and that. Trying to say I will, I will not look at ladies. Ah, she is pretty. No, in Jesus' name, blood of Jesus. This is the law. This is, this is trying to use human strength. It doesn't work that way. Because I was, how many nude people do you see in our society every day? You can, you can, you can avoid watching pornography. You can avoid watching this. But what of your lecture? What of your workplace? Are you getting what I'm saying? You see a guy that is dressed, sagging his trousers and his, his boxers, his inner waist are already showing. And the guy is just moving around and doing all kinds of things. There are all kinds. It's called the mystery of lawlessness. So what do you do? You die because there are pretty ladies around you? What do you do? You are working in a department where there are pretty ladies. Now unto him. Hallelujah. Who is able to keep you. Everybody say he can keep me. Say it he can keep me. Oh he can supply the strength. Yes he can. Yes he can. Yes he can. If he cannot. Then he is not qualified to be called Lord. Hallelujah. So you can hold on to that phone. And look at it and say pornography. Finally. I have found out that it's not about struggling. You see, the problem is many of us grace preachers, we now say, we do not teach this technology of escape, but we just say, look, just as you believe, believe, meditate on good things, which is nice. But how do you refuse something that is working inside you? It's not just something that is working outside you. There is an agency. It's called the law of sin and death. So, even if a little baby that you give birth to suddenly starts looking at people and pointing his hand because there is a law. On the other hand, now you sit down and you are saying, oh, the grace of God has appeared to me, but you are dying because this spiritual technology was not shown you. And then we have people who religiously try to say, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this. And the guy says to me, God forbid, whereas he's dying in silence. He looks at Esther and he's like, hey, oh God, if I don't marry this girl, let me die. Whereas his claiming is okay, both are wrong. One is using human strength and willpower. You have been sleeping with ladies all your life. I hope you know that these things have memory. It's in your mind. You used to club. You used to drink. Your mind has recorded what it feels like. So is it willpower you used to stop? All of a sudden, you look at the lady you used to sleep with. Both of you know. And you are already vulnerable. You want to use willpower. You are joking. You are joking. You are joking. Ah, but there is a supply. They that wait upon the Lord. He says... They shall renew their strength. I love the way he put it. He said they will mount up. Mount up. It's a realm. It's a realm. It's a realm. It's not just about determination. Oh, I will not do this. You will do it. It's a realm. Depend on the grace and the power that the Holy Ghost brings to your life. You know that he came into your life but you are yet to explore the provisions that he came with. And you must cry out that he will open you up to those possibilities. Number two, walking in the spirit entails, and this is most important, living under the authority of God's word. That means making the word of God the ultimate basis. Making the word of God the ultimate basis for your judgments, 
for your decisions, for your choices. Walk in the spirit. The word of God must become the basis for your decisions, for your choices, and for your judgments. Allowing the word of God to rule your thinking, to rule your talking, to rule your actions. Every aspect of your life. You must allow the word to rule your thinking. Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. Whatsoever things are pure, true, noble. It says think on these things. Our time is up. Rise up. Let's pray. I want to talking about prayer and fasting. And showing us a strategy for studying the word. Fellowship with the spirit. And the sacrifice of a pure and holy life. We'll just touch that next week before we move on to another topic. Is someone challenged tonight? Lift your voice and begin to pray. And say, flesh, you have no power over me. Come on now, lift your voice, Koinonia. We're out of time. Let's pray. The power of the flesh is broken over my life. The lusts and the appetites, carnality, that which comes as a result of my affinity to this realm is broken i break materialism from my life go ahead and pray holy spirit i receive a supply a supply of power a supply of divine energy I refuse to be a slave to the appetites of the flesh. I refuse to be a slave. Hallelujah. Last prayer point. We're out of time. Hallelujah. As we make this last prayer point, please, if this is your first time of worshiping with us in Koinonia, I'd like us to save time so that we can get the bus. I'd like you to just come out and stand here. You can be praying while you come. We are going to pray. Mention all the things that you know still have authority over you and declare that by the power of the spirit your authority is lost over my life. Go ahead. While we do that those worshiping with us for the first time God bless you as you come. Pray. Pride. Materialism. Gluttony. Anger. Fain glory. Please give them room as they come out. Give them room as they come. God bless you as you come. All of us lift up our voices and let's pray. I'm a changed person. I stopped struggling tonight. It's not about willpower. It's not about willpower. Tapping into a supply of the spirit. Grace that comes by the Holy Ghost. Grace that comes by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow. A number of people today. Thank you so much brothers and sisters for coming. I'm sure that you were blessed tonight. Your life will never be the same. I guarantee you. As this word was coming, I want you to know that yokes, burdens, infirmities just leave people like that. And I know that many of you will return with testimonies. Hallelujah. This is Koinonia. I want to pray for you and we're all going to pray for you. We're anointed and when we bless you, you truly are blessed. Stretch your hands, saints of God. Speak, prophesy into their lives. We bless you. Oh, we bless you. From tonight, we bless you with a hunger for prayer, a hunger for the word, a hunger for spiritual things. We declare that your transition to become truly spiritual begins tonight. Every weight, every encumbrance upon your life is broken. Every dominion of the flesh is destroyed in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. 
and that is I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity and then don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye